Ladies and gents, welcome to the Super Sunday Show, live on Airliners Live. We've not said that for a while. Super Sunday Show, let's get cracking. See some names in the chat. Plenty going on at the airport. We're just getting the last few bits and bobs. I tell you what, it's been a while since I've been surrounded by this many screens, chat. <laughs> but uh, it feels good to be back. Of course, we've got Brownie up on the roof. Hello. How's it going? Buzzing, buzzing. And uh, we've got Mr. Matt Smith. Over on Apron Camp, and uh, you're keeping an eye out, aren't you, Matty Boy? Because uh, there's a little, yes, little something, little something over there. Yes, we've got the lovely Austrian retro over here. There we just go. Just ready to, just waiting the pushback. Well, morning, everybody. Welcome, every everyone. Happy Sunday. Well, we are doing well, Matt, and uh, yeah, good to have you back. Great to have the Super Sunday show back as well on our screens. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've got loads of cool stuff happening today. Uh, we're going to be bringing you all of the aviation action here from Manchester Airport until about 12.30 today. And uh, plenty of aviation action to come as well. But uh, let's get some names in the chat. Let's welcome some people in. We've got AKG uh, literally had the stream ready to go on Twitch. Welcome to you. Sanchez on tour, a very warm welcome to you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just say GG. Hello, GG to you, son. GG. And uh, easily. Hello, good morning to you. Uh, Joanna Smith, Sam Donison, Carl. Uh, one, two, three, four. Shanae, Henna, Laura, Pia, Audrey. Jules, Mike Delta, Gary Bennett. Look, everybody's in. Everybody is in. Look at this. Matt's already got a beautiful shot over an apron camp with uh, the Singapore A350. I've missed the apron camp. I've missed the apron camp. Absolutely. So, as um, Vincent says in the chat, a very happy St. Patrick's Day as well to all those who celebrate. I'm sure there may be one or two uh, Irish folk in the uh, in the chat as well. Very close to Ireland, of course. I'm pretty sure Dublin is the, the most served route these days out of Manchester as well. Plenty of flights linking uh, the capital of the Republic of Ireland to Manchester. Aer Lingus, of course, and uh, Ryanair, probably the two biggest ones there. But yes, uh, very happy St. Paddy's Day. All. And uh, as we can see, the Austrian uh, retro is uh, on stand. We're waiting for that to be pushed back. Be a nice catch uh, up there. Not seen that for ages. They're yeah, really nice, uh, nice arrival. But first aircraft coming in uh, for us here at Manchester is the Scandinavian A320neo in from Copenhagen. 
loving seeing these at Manchester. How are you doing, Jake? Well, welcoming folks. This is the place to be on your Sunday morning here on the Airliners Live Super Sunday show as Laurie returns back for 31 months up before the crack of dawn for Airliners <laughs> Live. Wow. Never a problem. Best aviation channel on YouTube. Thank you very much, Laurie. That is incredibly early over there. Morning, Jakey boy. Scandinavian in the classic colours of SAS. Quite nice visibility today as well. You can see the moors in the background there as well. Mrs. Airliners Live is also back for 31 months. Oh, Who's wow. that? <laughs> plus, plus V80. So I'm going to break away from this Scandinavian for a second, Andy, because we've got the Singapore head on on the apron. Nice. And uh, give us a touch more on camera one zooming in as well if you want. And there it is, beautiful. Singapore A350. It's not very often we see it coming down here, is it, Matt? Um, normally you park it over on the uh, on Pier 1 at T2, but um, as me and Andy were driving over to here this morning, all the stands are really, really packed over at T2, so uh, yeah, needs to be. There we go. Parking ah. it around the end stand here. Does seem mad busy in Manchester today. Expect yeah, lots yeah. of planes on today's show. All different shapes and sizes. British Airways rolling on the departure. shuttle services down to London Heathrow usually operate about seven or eight of them per day it's quite a lot <laughs> if you ask me on our first prop of the show on on the approach as well next to the land looks like an ATR 72 certainly is ATR 72 in from Guernsey Bit of a breeze here at Manchester today. Where weather forecast was saying about 15, 16 knot gusts today, which is pretty calm compared to what we're used to. <laughs> but I'm sure you won't see any uh, issue with these planes getting down today. Usually this time of year can be very hit and miss with weather. It's definitely getting warmer though. Definitely. Days are getting longer as well, of course. That's nice. And uh, this is that Irini touches down. Austrian Retro pushing back on Matt Cam. And we've just been joined by a special guest. Hello. Morning all. No way. Hello, mate. It's the guy. It's the CEO. Yeah. The boss has arrived. That's it, chat. <laughs> That's it. It's Stand a benevolent watch dictator. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Pay rises all round. Yes. Boss is here. <laughs> Mr. Captain Mark. Hello. Nearly, nearly called you Matt Smith, then. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Smith. I'm not that much of a legend. <laughs> How you doing, mate? Yeah, all right. All right. Get myself all sorted now. Really is a Super Sunday show today. The whole gang's here. And here's what's making all the noise. Beautiful. And, uh... We're going to have to make a bit of noise as well. Oh, my gosh. Laurie. 
Laurie has just upgraded a membership to an incredible executive club member. She wants the briefcase, the slate black suit with the pinstripes. Yes. All uh, leftovers from Dr. Disrespect's Champions Club closet. Well, thank you very much, Laurie, for the huge membership upgrade to uh, Executive Club, our highest tier of membership on Airliners Live. Thank you so much, Laurie. Thank you so, so much. It's crazy busy here at Manchester. It it's is. It's only going to get busier, I'm afraid. How's the terminal buildings these days, Mark? I know it's been getting busier and busier year on year at Manchester. I, I'll try and avoid it if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go through the service yard with all the uh, rent rats and uh, go straight to the aircraft. I'll try and avoid the terminal. It's, it's too busy. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely picking up, though. So for those who don't know, Mark here, our special guest, is actually uh, an Airbus captain here at Manchester Airport on one of your rare days off today, Mark? Is no, that no, I'm in late, so I'm off to Keflavik. Um, oh, wow. Very nice. Good yeah. yeah, nice and windy up there. How's mm. it doing up there now? Because I've, I've kind of kept out of touch with uh, everything that's going on with that. Um, there was a volcano issue up there. Oh, yeah, that, that's, 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 all now? that's all right. That's behaving okay. itself at the moment. Yeah, no, it's, it's all right. Uh, what's it doing? It's supposed to be uh, gusting 33 a bit later. Well, so that would be nice. Wow, that's wild. So, you as a pilot, would you get information about that on the meta? Like, watch out for volcanoes. <laughs> you, yeah, you get these uh, um, volcano notices come through and tell you whether it's rumbling or not. Or you know, they they get these uh, ash tams as well, tell you where the uh, volcanic ash cloud is, so you can avoid it. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> and, and they're and they're like active volcanoes, aren't they? So, is yeah. that something as a pilot you've got to kind of just consider like oh i'm gonna just keep an eye on that one there yeah i mean if, <laughs> if it's too bad then they'll just cancel the flight they won't they won't send yeah. you up there because it's just too too touchy yeah. um, but no i mean it's it's uh, there's nothing i'm just looking at the notes is now there's absolutely nothing there nice uh, that i can see at the moment there's loads of work they're really, you know doing loads of works up there but it does mean <laughs> i get to see some 757s which is nice. yes very nice. Maybe some of the special liveries, maybe. It was there was looking? a couple there last time I was up. Yeah, it was only oh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, the uh, the two fancy the fancy one had been in here in the morning, and then as I was pulling the car park, I saw it go off. And then you know a few hours later, I'm landing and it's sitting there parked up. I often wonder that because when when I went to Lisbon, for example, I seen the Tap Retro. Yeah. Uh, I think it was an A321. And I was like, wow, I finally got to see it. But then people of Lisbon probably see that day in, day out, because it lives there. And it's the same with Iceland, isn't it? The, the Aurora Borealis special and the Glacier special. Yeah. They live there, so they probably just see it every day. <laughs> yeah, you see it a lot, yeah. 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 And Vincent's saying, I hope you return that Eurocar playing with a full tank. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, I, I dream of the days, or well, miss the days where I used to, be able to fill the plane up when we used to go down to Africa. You know, the fuel policy was fill it up. Oh, yeah. Just fill it up. Yeah. Full toga. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was a seven five, so even uh, max takeoff weight, you can still you can still re reduce the power. Oh yeah. Lots of exciting things to talk about on today's show as well, including you guys may have seen a, uh, a post that we put out a couple of days ago about an exciting new partnership on the channel as well. Absolutely. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll delve into during today's show. A huge thanks to Henna, upgrading membership to business class. You've just unlocked discounted merchandise, Henna. So thank you very much for your business class membership on the channel today. Amazing. And, uh, down the end of the runway, we've got the uh, Pathos flight jet to 737 just starting the roll. Give us a click up on your camera, Matt, as well, if you can. And Malky gifting a membership to the community. Thank you, Malky. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done one of these Super Sunday shows, but it's uh, <laughs> certainly good to be back. 
And Dollis, a brand new business class VIP as well. Thank you so much, Dollis. Yeah, if, ladies and gents, if this is the first time maybe you're one of our new viewers. Um, this is what we call our Super Sunday show. Now, I'm down here, as you can see, with a million screens all the way around. <laughs> the back and uh, we've got a ton of cameras. Yeah. So we're going to go through the cameras with you. I'm going to switch it over to a cut so it switches nice and quick. We've got a wide cam, which is, this is where Andy is upstairs. So as you can see, Andy's got two cameras on the roof. <laughs> Crazy, right? So, uh, wide cam. Then we've got the option to punch in. Yaboosh. There we go. So that's the same shot, obviously, as you can see on Andy's cam. They're both facing the same way. But when he does that with his hand, it goes bang like that. See what I mean? Just that transition <laughs> there. It's just, that's it. And then uh, down here we've got our view. Me and uh, Mr. Mark at the controls. Oof. I'm captain. Oh. Senior. <laughs> First officer, yeah. I think. That's why you're sitting here, right? Uh, obviously, Andy up on the roof. Uh, Mr. Matt Cam Smith over on the apron uh, can literally see the whole apron, bringing us all the pushbacks, all the information. And then, brand new to us on the channel, we've now got a sixth input to the channel, courtesy of a true aviation icon, Flight Radar 24. Wow. Integrating in with the airliners live stream here on your Super Sunday show and the midweek Wednesday shows as well. So we're going to be able to make full use of this application. Let's get some 10 out of 10s in the chat for Flight Radar 24. We've had a couple of meetings with the guys. Uh, Chris has been absolutely awesome since he's been on the show with us. And um, we're proud, and I think they're proud as well, to be uh, integrated into the airliners live live stream. And uh, it's going to bring you guys as much information as possible. And you guys have just seen it. What's just pinged up, just as we're saying... Emirates A380 out to Dubai, and if we switch across, boom, it's uh, just started pushing back. So a huge shout-out, huge shout-out, and a uh, huge thank you to Flight Radar 24 um, And, folks, there is more to come on that as well. At the moment, we're just integ integrating the app as it is, but uh, watch this space is, is all we'll say. And, um, yeah, a huge thank you to Flight Radar 24 for uh, working with us, especially for Airliners Live. It's... Um, something we're very proud of it's a huge name in aviation and um yeah it really does kind of i don't know it, it gives you good vibes about the show it's i think crazy yeah because it's it's like an app that transcends just have geeks you know like my mum uses it for example whenever a plane goes over she sends me a screenshot look what's just gone over my head yeah. and um I, it's crazy to find out that chris himself is actually quite a big fan of the channel as well he has it on in the background when he's working at home and stuff um it's awesome great stuff and also, we do have a couple of the uh, key tags left here at the tower at the RVP. So if anyone's down visiting and we're here live, come and say hello. And we might have a Flight Radar 24 luggage tag for you guys as well. So check that out. Absolutely. But here it is. Austrian retro, beautiful aircraft uh, to see today. It's hot. Um, that is very pretty. Going to make her way down to 2-3 right to part. Off to Vienna. Looks like it's just holding, though, for somebody. Hmm. Nobody around it, though. There's a Swiss A220 behind. Or I don't know what plane it is, but I can see a Swiss tail behind. Whether there's going to be an overtake. Swiss has the inside line. Go for the overtake. <laughs> <laughs> With the hairpin. I don't what he's doing there. He don't normally sit. But, you know, he's, he's like he's on Delta. But normally you'd go down sort of Pepper and Kilo Juliet up that way. Yeah, you think so, wouldn't you? He's moving again. Oh. I just have a quick think about it. Yeah. <laughs> just Apparently, uh, Mark, news in this morning, the volcano has erupted again. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. They knew you were coming, mate. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, our alternate's Edinburgh, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit closer. We'll go it? and have a look, and we'll just turn around and come back. <laughs> <laughs> you drop us off while you're there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quick stream from Edinburgh. So what's the um, sort of things you'd have to think about with that sort of thing, then? Because, obviously, with it being a cloud, with it being like an ash cloud, is it... Does it take more wind power to shift it, or can it literally just be moving all over the place? They, they just... They, they generally sort of drift. They do move with the wind, but... Um, yeah, I mean, you, you get a chart that shows you where it is. Um, we get notices on our uh, work, one of our work sites that tells us every morning, every evening, what what the operational effects are to the uh, to the day. Um, 
at the moment they're saying there's weather here, there's weather here, strong winds at Keflavik. Oh, yeah, we know about that. <laughs> they're not mentioning it. But, yeah, you'll, you'll get a heads up on it. And, you know, if it's... It, you, they try and flight plan you around it so you don't go anywhere near it. But if, it, if it's a big one, then you just don't go. You don't go anywhere near it. Yeah. And you avoid it like the plague. And I remember a few years ago we did one in the sim where, you know, they, they flew, you know, you flew into an ash cloud and all these things started happening, which weren't much fun and... So what sort of effect? That's obviously not going to be very good for the engines. Probably no. not very good for the probes. No, no. Um, I'm trying to think what happened. It it was a few years back now. The uh, It all goes sort of like a ready colour. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. I mean, I remember when there was a volcano years ago. We, we'd been down to Malaga and we ended up diverting it to Liverpool. And we're coming up. It was all over the northeast, and we came up and we could see it. We could see this. The sky had gone sort of like an orangey, ready colour. Yeah. Uh, but in the sim, yeah, that had happened. And then certain things stop working which I won't go into in case there's any nervous <laughs> players but you know you recover it and we, we diverted into it was um, I think it was Etna they had and we, we, we lobbed into somewhere in uh, one of the Greek islands I think it was but um, yeah I mean it was just it, it was one, they call them these stretch exercises so what they do now is they use um, evidence based training mm -hmm. so they look at what's going wrong in, in aviation and they train us not to do it and, you know, every year, you, every six months, you used to get the engine failure on takeoff, single engine landing to go around, single engine approach and landing. And Shame uh, they don't do the evidence-based training mm. on the chef of the crew food, isn't it? Yeah. Really show you what's going wrong. Yeah. 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 They, they know, they just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what they do is they look at these sort of events and they, they give us a scenario where, you know, they see how you deal with it. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting one. It, it was. I am... Um, when it started to get a little bit icky, what I did is I put the engine igniters on um, because I didn't know what was going on and it didn't look very nice. So if you're going into convective cloud or heavy rain or, you know, whatever, you put the igniters on, I put that on. And the trainer actually said that's, uh, you've got one of your engines back a lot quicker because the igniter's already on. Oh, right. like, oh okay, that's good. nice. <laughs> good to know. Thinking, yeah. uh, thinking ahead as well. Yeah. Morning, Hinshi. How are you doing, mate? Hello, hello. Loads of planes on the taxi out at the moment, but keeping our eyes on this one. Inchi, you don't know anybody at Vatsim, do you? I put my application in, I want to do some Manchester ground, and I put it in, like, two months ago. Is it still, <laughs> like, a year wow. before you get any sort of training at Vatsim? Because I want to have a go. I Is think it'd be some really good content for the channel as well. I'm guessing there's not much uh, supply. I mean, there's a lot of supply, but not much demand, right? Well, but the weird thing is with Vatsim UK is it never seems to be that busy. <laughs> Right. So I, it seems like there's plenty of room, but oh. it's just like you just can't get the training. Interesting. Hey, Dad's Secret Kitchen. Gifting five airliners live memberships to the community. Thank you very, very much, mate. Wow, thanks. That's awesome. Thank you very much for your support to the channel. I mean, there's a job going to Barton Aerodrome in the tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to put your CV in. <laughs> Do your missus not fancy that, Andy? Uh, I think... She's quite good at what she does, is, is the problem there, you know? Like, she's pretty good, you know? I don't yeah. think they'd want to lose her as a fire and rescue, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah. She does She does like it there. She likes handling the vehicles there, you know? They've got that, that old um, Land Rover Defender, and um, she calls it Bessie, I think. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a charming vehicle. I think it's called Fire 2, I believe they call it, formally. Ten quid says she's had that on two wheels start going around the corner. Not <laughs> two. <laughs> Three minute response time. <laughs> and a big thanks to the Flying Architect. 36 months. Look what I got today. My gold tail badge is gone, replaced with a Wookiee. Three years on YouTube, but was a member on Facebook for a good while before that. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers for the long term support to the channel. Um, and Edelweiss returning to Premium Economy membership. Thank you very much for your support. That's a cool name. A little bit of spray on the runway there. It's pretty humid today. You see a bit of uh, condensation on the wings when they're coming in. Very moist, isn't it? Yes. Very moist Sunday. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, uh, I found, when uh, we were at the TAS fair, Niels was saying about his 737 rating, and I said, I've got still got me... 
practice question papers somewhere in the house in the oh, wild. Yeah. And I uh, said, I'll, if I can find them, I'll, I'll, I'll copy them for you. So I, 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 last time I was home, I actually went up in the loft and found them. Took mm. a fair bit of digging and a fair bit of pain on the knees to find these things, but I've gone. <laughs> so I'm about a, a third of the way through photoing these things and sending them to them. There's another lad uh, from work. He's, he's doing the TUI sponsorship, oh. and uh, he's getting them as well. Yep. Um, but uh, reading reading through them, I'm sitting there like, I'm glad I don't have to fly this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were saying mm. like about the overhead panel to me, weren't you? Because we did oh, that, yeah. obviously, dual pilot incapacitation video. I'd highly recommend anyone check it out. Awesome video on the airliner's lounge. But you said it was quite nice at the Airbus because you have that overhead panel. is a bit easier to follow as well. Yeah, it's very, very sensibly laid out. I mean, we did... When we did the narration video afterwards, um, really enjoyed that. Actually, it was really good. Oh um, yes, the VIP one. Saw the VIPs. Make sure you watch it. And if you're not a VIP, get yourself a uh, VIP membership and go and watch it because it's really good. Because we were explaining to a point about the ergonomics of the flight deck and how things have changed. When you look at the 737, you know the overhead panels from the 60s. It's it's antiquated. It's not very. You know, you, you wouldn't get it certified now. Um, the engine anti-ice switches are right next to the hydraulic switches, and they're the same switch. So you can easily misselect something. Um, whereas the Airbus, it's a little bit more. It's a lot more clearer. Yeah, that was fa fascinating about them ergonomics on the, Air yeah. the Airbus uh, tactiles, I suppose you call them. Yeah, and even you know, like the the mode control panel for using the autopilot. All the buttons are different. Yeah, and they're laid out in the same order they are on on your. Um, artificial rising in front of you the really important one and it's you know it's it's speed heading um altitude rate of change of altitude and they're laid out the same way and all the buttons are different um so uh, yeah it's good um but i mean we did have a comment oh you know you, you they always do use you know do this in an airbus and never in a 7-3 I, I, I put a message up saying you know we do it again on a 7-3 i'll do it exactly the same yeah, and in some ways it would be probably, possibly a little bit easier um, because the seven threes, you know, it can still auto land. Um, it, it'll auto land quite nicely, and some of the levers, because of, you know, like the flap levers, are really big. It's easier to find. Um, yeah, it, you know, we'd just do exactly the same thing. I'd give them the headings the same. I'd get them to use exactly the same thing. I'd get them to slow it down, get the flaps out, get the gear down, set the auto brake. And if anything, with the 7.3, I would say the autopilot is slightly easier because you've not got any of that push-pull yeah. stuff with it. It's just set the set the metric, press the button, set yeah. the metric, press the button. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, I would have thought, it, if anything... Uh, setting up would be slightly easier yeah. in the 7 I think you're spot on, actually, um, because, yeah, I mean, when I first saw years ago the Airbus MCP, I was like, well, where's the level change button? Where's the heading button? I didn't realise you had to push or pull. That's what I mean. So you're yeah. adding another layer there, yeah. whereas for somebody who's never flown an aircraft before, it makes more sense to not have, like, dual layer functions on, yeah. on the control panel. Um, big thank you to YNW8, brand new Premium Economy member, supporting the stream today. Thank you very, very much. Is that a Liverpool FC reference by any chance? I don't know. Will he, will he be in uh, Manchester today? <laughs> <laughs> and Ian, thank you very much for grading your membership uh, to first class. Cheers, Ian. We also had Brian King returning for nine months, saying good morning. Hope you're well. Good to see Captain Mark on board this morning. Passing the time sitting at work this morning. Having, uh, have a good day all from Brian King. Hope you have a great day at work, Brian, and thank you very much for your support. If you are enjoying the stream today, folks, please uh, consider becoming one of our awesome VIPs. It helps cover the cost of the channel, um, and it helps keep the channel running and keep everything free for everybody. You can do that by clicking the dollar symbol, then clicking join. Or if you're already a member, you can gift memberships, making somebody's day by clicking the dollar symbol, then clicking gifted membership. As Caitlin sends in a two euro donation saying happy St. Patrick's Day and the same to you as well. Thank you very much for tuning in and thanks for your support. Rocket Wolf on Twitch, hello, welcome to you. And uh, Luke Herman, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. I've got a um, shout out to Plane Spotting Mike, he's in the chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's just got engaged. He did. Yeah, good lad. Um, hello from us. And Kevin uh, Henry VIII is asking, is fuel cheaper in other countries and can you make use of it? To save money for the airline, uh, it can be, and it can be also a lot more expensive. So we do a thing called tanking. Um, Greta would not approve. <laughs> so we put as much on as we can where it's cheap, so we don't have to put as much on where it's expensive. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes you can. 
do a thing called round trip fuel. So if you go somewhere like Jersey, the Isle of Man, where it's it is quite pricey down there, um, if you can, you try and get as much on. Sometimes you can actually round trip it; you can get enough on to come back. Um, but certain airports, yeah, it is very very expensive. Just make sure you take your nectar card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get all the points I get can. Get points. <laughs> there, 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 I remember one place. There, I can't remember where it was. It was really dirt cheap at one point, and the airlines were all filling up there, you know, and bringing it all back. <laughs> Big Q. Yeah. Juicy free. Yeah. <laughs> Out goes the uh, Tui on the way out. I uh, I did just have a look where that was going. I'd completely forgotten, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> <coughs> My mum had a flight on a Tui Dreamliner on Tuesday. Tui Echo was the plane. Miles of smiles. Very nice. So it was wonderful. It's a long flight all the way to Thailand, though. It's a long way. I haven't got my postcard yet. Oh, from Tenerife? No, from your mum. Oh, your mum. <laughs> I haven't got the one from Tenerife either. Oh, yes. And on the taxi out next to uh, pull onto the runway, uh, out to Geneva, Jet 2737. 24 years old, this one. Loving this uh, info coming in from Flight Radar, guys. As we say, huge shout out to Flight Radar, partnering with Airliners Live uh, to bring you all of the information of what's going on around the airport. Absolutely awesome. Love having this as part of our uh, shot set on the show. Yeah, it's great. Make sure you tag them in a post on Twitter if you're enjoying it, guys. Let them know you're enjoying seeing the app on the stream. Yeah, they are very active on the old Twitters, aren't they? they sharing our streams often, getting involved, commenting in things. Um, and obviously, if you are watching the, the show, uh, feel free to get a picture up there, maybe of the setup you're watching on, if you're watching on a TV. We had someone watch it on, was it Wednesday, on a projector? Like, oh, no, they were, they were preparing the wall for a projector, weren't That's they? That's right, yeah. They were painting the wall. So things like that are crazy. Watching an airliner's live show on the TV or whatever. See, we've got the uh, airliner's merch modelling. Johanna Smith's in the chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> merch queen. That's it. <laughs> Amy's in as well. She's been uh, enjoying all my pictures of my crew food I've been putting up on the uh, Discord. <laughs> right, my scrap. Yeah. You should never show a nurse the food that you're eating. Just, you know. How does it work? Do you have to, like... Do you just pick on the on the day, or is it like uh, pre-order? They, they load it. They load it, and you get there's certain there's certain they you know certain crew food sets, bar sets you get, and there's uh, a la carte yeah, buffet. Yeah, yeah. We'll go that far. <laughs> yeah, on the on the shorter ones you might just get a sort of a hot sandwich or something. On the longer ones you'll get a sandwich and a meal. So you have a sandwich on the way out, normally a meal on the way back, and then on the really long ones they do these things called hot snacks. They're actually not too bad. They're better than the actual main meals, but the main meals are tiny. Mm. And they're about 200 calories each. So if you're doing, say, you know, uh, I don't know, Paphos and back, where, you know, it's it's sort of four, four and a half, five hours each way, one little sandwich and one little 200-calorie meal and maybe a little hot snack as well isn't really enough to keep you going. But, yeah, yeah. Do you ever have a time at the airports to nip into the terminal or is that yeah I mean if you get there early enough you can go and get it but there is a, a salary exchange to, that was arranged years ago yep. um, so we do actually lose some of our salary to pay for this wonderful crew food oh, and right. if you, that you know, sounds like what I was talking about last week on my paper round where I used to trade all my wages in for sweets yeah yeah it sounds about the same man. Yeah, yeah. the adult version yeah. Yeah. the adult version yeah. Yeah. You, you get to the end of the month you've got no food like because you've bought all the Snickers and everything like that <laughs> <laughs> Negative salary this month. <laughs> you know what I mean? Gosh. The more you work, the more you spend. A380 lining up, ready. Well, it's uh, waiting behind a Ryanair, which is just pulling on to the runway out to Dublin. And then following that out will be the A380. Brian, ask it if you can take your own food on. You can do, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can do. A lot of the crew do, because. Uh, but obviously, you know, I've already paid for it once, and I'm going to pay for it twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It does the job. Yeah. I went past Dublin the other day, uh, when it, well, actually, on the way down to 10 Hours of Grief, and on the way back to, from 10 Hours of Grief, I might have said on the PA it's the biggest city in Ireland because it keeps Dublin and Dublin in size. <laughs> <laughs> you could hear the groaning from the front. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
And how are you doing today, Matty boy? You got anything planned this afternoon, mate? Um, not a lot, mate. Thinking about getting a takeout after, if anyone's got any suggestions. Well, me and Jen had a uh, chippy tea last night. It was quite nice. Oh, yeah. Hey. Yeah, we, uh, we've been quite social this weekend, me and Jen, for a change. We, uh, went out on Friday night for a little meal in the Trafford Centre, went for a wander round, and then, uh, oh, yeah. went out with my dad yesterday, and then, uh, ended up getting a bit of a chippy tea last night. So, yeah, it's been, uh, <laughs> definitely going to be having a chill this evening. Bit of Counter-Strike, I think. We were going to go out last night for a meal, and, uh, Ended up getting a takeaway. Got an Indian. Oh, very nice. And it was a. Uh, is it called a Ceylon? Is it called? Has anyone ever had one of them? There's a Ceylon. Uh, How cheap was it? <laughs> Ceylon. It wasn't very cheap. That was spicy. That was spicy. That dish, though. That was. Uh, that was a bit. I was pushing my limits. That thing. No, that's what they say. If you're getting it half price, we're going to whack all the chilies. <laughs> <laughs> Went to Five Guys yesterday for the first time after a Hindu. Certainly recommend the Cajun fries. How's your bank balance now? I was going to say, <laughs> Joanna. It's like, it's like a mortgage on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like our payday loans. And get a dinner at Five Guys. <laughs> Just don't ask for a large fries there. They give you all oh, God. the fries in the world. Give you a bucket? Yeah. It was my daughter's birthday the other day. We went to the uh, Chiquito. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, it was nice, but, uh, yeah, dear me, the old bank balance took a kick. <laughs> what? You know, only had a burrito, I don't know, a minute. <laughs> the old moths were coming out of the wallet then. <laughs> Pot pies in the fridge saying late. Stick to your crew food. Yeah. <laughs> Not seen this one before. That's tidy. Nice little Cessna. Nice blue livery as well. It's like a plane, only smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Polish designated? SP DLV? Very, uh, very navy blue, this. My only question is, you committed that much with the blue. Like, why not just finish it? You know what I mean? <laughs> why leave the engine? <laughs> it matches the tail, doesn't it? If you go in blue, just go blue. You know what I mean? Maybe it'll flake off with the heat of the engines. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty nice. Oh, it looks like Fat Albert's lining up. Oh, here we go. Might see some more executive jet engines at the uh, football game on today, I guess. It's like when you see the um, the Super Bowl in the US, in it, and all them planes yeah. going in and out. Usually do a time lapse on um, Flight Radar 24. And this jet too on the way out to Lanzarote. I believe it's next week. Not this week coming, but the week after that uh, Jet 2 will be starting at Liverpool Airport. Be a huge step for that uh, much smaller airport, but big ambitions, right? Gavin Plain Spotting Mike's going to be there for the big day. Yes. At, uh, Monday, apparently. Easy Jet roping in a base in uh, Birmingham. Oh, nice. On uh, Monday, I don't think anyone's streaming that because I don't think anyone cares. But <laughs> 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 They haven't publicised wow. it like uh, Jet 2, like their publicity. Yeah. Crazy rolling already. And oh, we need to talk about the 380 in a minute. For all you flights in fans.
Beautiful. I also think with uh, Jet 2 at Liverpool, I think it's more of like an inaugural launch, isn't it? Because they've never done flights from thing, but I've, I assume EasyJet maybe have done some flights from Birmingham before. I think you could fly there already from to a few destinations, but they just didn't have a base there, is that right? Yeah, it was normally done from other bases into Birmingham or W yeah. patterns and all of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a big catchment area as far as I haven't got in there before. So like an 8.330 next to land here at Manchester Airport. Nice wide body arrival. Ribbon machine. There's aircraft on the way in from Bridgetown. Left seven hours, 40 minutes ago. Virgin Atlantic A330. There it is, looking absolutely beautiful. That's quite a quick flight, that, for transatlantic. And Matt's still tracking that A380 out for us as it makes a right-hand turn on its departure out of Manchester. So what's all this, then, about an A380? So, flights in, guys... What do we reckon? Fly by Wire released a video preview of their A380. And to say I'm excited is something else. And you know what? I can call it already. I'm not going to be able to get on Stand 12 at Manchester for about six weeks. <laughs> There's just going to be a queue of A380s at Manchester. I absolutely guarantee it. But come, listen. Come park up by SDS. That's where they. But when we've got two in, that's where they normally stick the second one. Oh, there you go. go. Yeah. I watched the Fez's video of that last night. I, 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 even I was excited. I haven't even got flights in. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I've, they've done an incredible job. The sounds look awesome. Um, the texture in that shot where they flew by underneath it and they kind of showed the belly of the aircraft in the crew it just looks oh. Feels like it's been in development for forever, that plane. <laughs> I know, but it's, it's going to be worth it, mate. Yeah. What an incredible-looking aircraft. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. And there's something I learned as well, which I'll tell you about. And, Jane, thank you so much. Gifting an Airliners Life membership to the community. That's awesome. Thank you, Jane. So, I, I naively said to John in a, in a message, I said, mate, that A380 looks mint. But is it just me or does it look like you're not very high in the cockpit when it was doing the taxi shot? All right. And John said, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. And he watched it again. And then we Googled it. And apparently, now, I'm, this is just Google, apparently there's only three feet of difference between the floor level of a 320 Whoa. and a 380. Mate, we're going to have to wait till a 380 comes in. That's now. not true. That is, is that true? Oh, One thing I will say, though, surprised. like, I'd be baffed, but I've Googled it loads, and mm. it keeps coming up. Same thing. Yeah. One, one thing I will say, though, it's not like a 7-4 where you're on the upper deck, are you? Isn't it like... You're in between the two. You're in yeah. between yeah. the two, yeah. So uh, A380... But surely the lower deck is about the same as, like, yeah. an A320, right? I don't know, like... It, it'd be, the wheels would be yeah, bigger, the landing gear's bigger, so the, the, the lower deck would... I mean, yeah, I suppose that the actual body at bottom of the plane would probably be... You know, there wouldn't be a lot in it. I mean, you see them quite often, don't you, Mark? Like, yeah. compare sizes and, you know, when you taxi past them, they do look massive compared to, you yeah. know, an A320, but... Well, if there's a fat Albert in when I taxi out later, I'll have a good look. And Just pull up alongside in, mate. Yeah, take, yeah, take, yeah, take no measure one mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, lads. <laughs> <laughs> I know not what he's yeah. measure. Martin just wants me to do this. Hang on, let's push back through. <laughs> It is, it is, I mean, the legs, when you look at the landing gear legs, they, they, you know, they're not the longest, they're not like, it doesn't look like it's got long legs like a, something like a 7.5. Um, I mean, the A320, is that much higher than the 7.3, I assume? Yeah, like when you, yeah, you can walk under us. Um, it's, it's not as high up as a 7.5, yeah. um, but it's higher than the 7.3. The 7.3 is really low at the ground, because obviously when it was designed in the 60s, it had those little Pratt & Whitney round, you know, Engines, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, um, that's why they're having all the problems now trying to put bigger engines on it because the legs are just too too little. Um, yeah. And this is a thing. I mean, Carl was asking, would I like to fly the 321 again? I've never actually thrown the 321. I used to fly the 75. I'd love having a go in that. Um, but they're very hot on tail strikes. Um, you've got all this 
software on the 320 that calls out pitch if you if you pull a bit too hard on the landing or if you, your nose is too high and the 321 even more so because it's a long plane with little leg little legs whereas the 75 the legs were longer so you'd have to have a higher nose to actually hit the tail it was it was less of a worry well you don't want to be flying the uh, the max 10 then do you no <laughs> no, I, no i don't want to fly 73 again ever if i can help it <laughs> tracy thank you very much for gifting an airliners live membership going to rob guest thank you very much for that thank you and uh melbourne flights returning for seven months tuning in from melbourne australia welcome to you and ron streams returning for five months uh, saying good day andy martin matt and matt up you're all having a fabulous morning thank you very much really appreciate that uh, I've not heard about that, Steve Smith. I've not uh, not seen anything, mate. I think Melbourne is one place I'd love to, to go spotting. That's probably on my top five. Just looking at videos and things from over there. I know Sydney's a big one. I think I'd uh, pick Melbourne, though. Just for the views. What's the matter with Skegness? Yeah, that's, that's top five as well. Yeah, though. that's good. That's all right. <laughs> Up there with Miami. <laughs> <laughs> So you got what do you got? Houston, Miami, uh, Melbourne, maybe Skegness, Funchal maybe would, would oh, be a bit yeah, of a curveball. Yeah. So there you go. So the height of the the eye height for an Airbus A380 is 7.2 meters. So it's lower than the 747, which is 8.7. Yeah. Wow. 8.7. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, 7.2. I did notice that, you know, like you said on the video last night, is that when they were taxiing, it looked like the actual seat was very low. Um, if you look on the on the centre beam on the windscreen, you'll see two red balls and a white ball in the middle. These little red balls and white balls, and they're your eye height alignment tool. All right. So what you want to do, I don't know if you can see it. Actually, you might be able to see it on that picture there. You've yeah, it's got, this um, on the front. Yeah, there. It? So what you want is where you're sitting. I look to me to me right to the centre beam of the windscreen, and I can see um, two red balls and a white and a, and, a, and a white ball. And what you want to do is position your seat so that the red ball is covering the white ball. Oh. And you want to look. You want to be able to see just not exactly down over the top of the sort of the dashboard, um, but you need to be able to see all your instruments as well. So seat height is quite important as a that pete herzberg uh, mate of mine who was on your uh, who he did a really good podcast he always used to get in trouble because he used to sit too low mm. and they were like oh when you're doing auto land you won't see the lights i'll oh, see the lights you know he's, he's a tall bloke anyway yeah um yeah. but yeah they they've set it up um so that all planes have have the optimal high height um the seven five i found when i sat in it sometimes i couldn't see the bottom of the lower screen the nav screen um I like me to see quite a way back as well because it helps me when I come into land. It's, it forces me to look down the runway rather than stay at the touchdown zone. Mm. Um, but yeah, you've got those little balls, and when it, that on that video when they were taxing out, it looked like you were looking, you were too low. Right. So yeah, John. The info that John found, and again, this this may be. Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, fixing something at the same time. Um, so an A380 cockpit apparently is 23 feet above the ground, whereas the A320 is 21 feet. Mm, okay. Which baffles me because mm. I thought there was a huge difference, but maybe that's maybe that's why. And obviously, when I noticed it on the fly-by-wire video, yeah. Because I remember looking at it and thinking, that doesn't look much different than the Airbus yeah. we fly, you know what I mean? Yeah. To me, it looked like the seat was too low, but... Uh, let's see if I'll find it. We're all going to be looking at that now when the A380 comes in. I know, we're going to have to. <laughs> Number one worldwide. Flight Radar 24, can we make it happen? <laughs> <laughs> What made me laugh was how uh, Chris fully embraced the fact that we kind of manipulate flight radar 24 to, <laughs> to make Manchester number one sometimes. We got it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I reckon we could fun. literally just pick the most random plane in the world. It was like when Captain Mark was number one. Do you remember that? that yeah, that, that I was going to say about that. It, it was hilarious. Wasn't <laughs> it was it? like an A three ninety, A three nineteen from Amsterdam. Yeah, <laughs> most tracked plane in the world. It was like, why are they tracking this? There That's are some cool. pilots who, who, who take that with good pride, you know, when they're number one. You know? <laughs> there, there have been a few like A three eighties that come in like, oh, I was finally number one. You know, thank you, Alan. <laughs> So. Yeah, there's the, that's what I was saying about the picture. Yeah. It does look like you're too low. You'd, you'd, I'd expect to be higher up. Yeah, I would. Yeah, unless the, the uh, unless the angle they they've angled it down. I don't know if you can see it on. Uh, yeah, we can show it to that camera there if you want to yeah. put it on. I don't know whether they've sort of angled it down to um, show the instruments more. But I would have thought. Yeah, so showing off the aircraft. From but. from my point of view, when I'm taxiing. It's probably just the camera angle, but I would, you know, you'd expect to see more of that and less of that. Yeah. More, more of the the picture out the window, but you can. I don't know if you can still see it. There's those red balls up there in the corner. I was talking about up, up there. Your eye height uh, alignment tool. Yeah. So you want those to. You want the red ball on the left to cover the white, the white ball, ball in, in the, the middle, middle, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's how you can make sure you got the right view in the flight sim as well. And uh, Carl, thank you very much for the four ninety nine donation. Uh, saying, uh, Mark, would you like to fly an A321 one day, especially if uh, Jet 2 get them at Newcastle? That would be fantastic, yes. Yeah, mm. If Jet 2 would give, be kind enough, if anyone's watching, give me four days on, four days off at Newcastle on the 321, I'll go tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Jet 2. Mm, go on, sorted. Jet 2, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think uh, you know, our lot are getting them here so at some point. Uh, I hear rumours, and then, you know, you, they don't tell us anything, so I don't know, but there's rumours. But I don't care. I mean, you know, it doesn't bother me. It's 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 not a seven five, so that's all that matters, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Ian's going into the sim now to check his camera views. <laughs> Absolutely. Angela, thank you very much for becoming a brand new premium economy member, supporting the stream today. Thank you very much. Air France, eighty twenty. Will we get a cheeky uh, cheeky Wookie? Let's see. really big windows the passenger windows are bigger on those I mean, look how big they are i mean you know you must get a really good view out of one of them yeah i can imagine it's pretty saucy did you talk to wookies did you see that article a while ago now it's on youtube uh, somewhere in, a, in australia there's a, a girl who was on the news because she, her boyfriend long-term boyfriend had split up with her mm. and being really petty he put these signs around the city they lived in i can't remember where it was with the little tags that you pull off with the phone number and they yes. were after a Wookiee impersonator, and you'd win a hundred dollars. And it was her <laughs> phone number. She's getting all these messages of these boats. Like, ah, I want my hundred bucks. <laughs> and, and she was like, "It's just child and pathetic." But it was incredibly funny. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen that video. Hey Natasha, good morning to you. Finn, uh, just uh, touching down. Uh -huh. Embryo as well. The sure. magic plane. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hundred people disappeared into thin air. Straight to the dad joke section. He's not letting him come on again. <laughs> <laughs> the fans love me. <laughs> Imagine being on a four-hour flight to Tenerife with him in the flight deck. That's four hours each way. <laughs> back on the uh, back on the mic, ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People trying to have a nap in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was a good impression, actually. That was good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 your right window. <laughs> there was a captain here years ago when, when you used to go down over the Pyrenees. He always used to say, if you look out the left side, you'll see the Pyrenees. If you look out the right side, you'll see the Pyrenees. And if you look down, you'll see a Pyrenees. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have done that myself a couple of times because I thought it was quite good. That's a good one. <laughs> one thing we did see in Tenerife was uh, a 2E2 jet. That oh, was yeah. really weird to see. It was um, Belgium, wrenched. Really strange. Nearly as strange as Fezzer actually behaving himself. I couldn't believe that. That was, yeah, that was odd. Ah. A bit weird. This is how long his life still in bed, apparently. Not daft. All right for some, isn't it? Yeah, not daft. I could still be in bed. You I've could. got to be at work until 2 o'clock, but Listen, I thought I'd come you, down you, and see right, you, you boys. You messaged me, mate. I know, I said, you know, you want me, I'm here. <laughs> need to take a page out of Fezzer's book. That's <laughs> it. How's he looking over there, Matty boy? Anything going on? Um, to be honest, mate, to say that a lot of aircraft um, on, the, uh, on the apron and stuff, there's not a lot of movement at the minute, but um, makes for a more uh, packed show later on, I think. Yeah, you've got a uh, Scandinavian pinging up um, just in front of you. Yeah. Um, so this I guess is we'll the baby be, here, yeah. I guess we'll be seeing that push back any moment. That red tail 330 is nice. Yeah, so that's the... Uh, yeah. That's the... Maleth. Maleth. Mm. The airliner's live plane. It is. Matt did yep. a great job the other day capturing us. The FO I was with is a lovely lad. He's uh, He's never seen himself on camera before. Ah. And I uh, told him that ah. Matt would be zooming in on him, so he was waving like mad. He was so excited. I think he sent it to his mum and everyone. Like he's a smashing lad. He's. Uh... Get in. But yeah, he was re he was really <laughs> taken with it. It was good. And when we landed, he got his phone out, quickly watched it back. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was cool. Instant replay. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. Was he flying it? Was he? No, I had to, I took it down because um, he, he'd been off for a couple of weeks. And he said, oh, "You know, you take it there." Fair yeah. enough. And he brought it back. Did a great job. Stage fright. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did a good job. Yeah. I swapped runways as well. We're coming in, so you know, two, three right, two, three right, and then suddenly the eighties prints out. It's like zero five left. Ah. What's happening there? Left. Yeah, we went right over the top of plane spot, spotting Mike's head, over right over the top of Scouse, and uh, right over the top of Mel's head, and then we came. Nice. <laughs> did you wave? I did. Flash me lights. Pulled the speed yeah. brake out like I do when yeah. I go over the big don to wake Susie B up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another buttery landing from the Ryanair. 737-800. Clearly landed at Manchester before. Ryanair UK plane. UK India on the reg. And it's Cat Gregory's birthday today. Let's get some celebration emotes in the chat for Cat. Very happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Here's the uh, Finn Air just pulling on to stand on uh, Matt Cam Smith and just pinging up Matty Boy is the uh, Jet 2 A330 out to Tenerife directly opposite hey, you on the pit. Nice. Eh? nice. Okay, mate. Peter Ward's asking, he's just about to do his A-levels and what, what do I advise the best route to get in the commercial aviation currently? Uh, it's difficult because it, it, it's changed so much over the years. Um, have a look at flying schools like Oxford Aviation and uh, CTC or L3, I think it is now, uh, one of them is. But yeah, have a look at those sort of schools, uh, the integrated course, and they, they, will pay, they normally pay you up with an airline as well. Um, so you'll get a job at the end of it. The only problem is you've got to stump up a load of money. Um, to, to do it, you know, there's our career development loans you used to be able to get. They seem to be a bit scarce, but that that's that seems to be the, the the common way of doing it now. The other way is to do your private pilot's license, do your instrument ratings, do your commercial exams, and build, do it modular, bit by bit by bit. 
and then uh, try and get a job at the end of it all. But uh, whichever way it is, it's, it's very, very expensive. Um, keep an eye on TUI and British Airways. They do sponsorship schemes. You haven't got to pay to live, but they will pay for your flight training. Uh, mm. Like I said, there's a friend of mine, a guy called Matt, who's uh, on the TUI scheme at the moment. He's doing very well. He's just passed all his ex uh, written exams. His first time passes with an average of 96%. Girly swat. Um, he's just about to start the flying. Um, but, yeah, the, keep an eye on those. I, I gather EasyJet might be doing one in the future as well. Um, but, you know, these sponsorships will be coming, will be more frequent because there is a, a, a big shortage of pilots at the moment. But good luck. Um, I know there's a, a good friend of the channel, um, and she flies at Barton as well, uh, one of the Cessna 150s, I think. Um, <laughs> Olivia Brooks, and she's on the, um, the TUI cadet program at the moment oh, as well, okay. and learning the 7.3s and... Getting up in the air. I think they do that out of East Midlands, I think. It's not like a long commute for people up here in Manchester. Um, but, yeah, there's loads of options, isn't there? I actually had a, um, a friend whose girlfriend was studying um, aviation at a uh, university. And as part of the university course, they got a PPL. It's pretty mad, isn't it? Like, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. That's good. I mean, most people come away with just a useless piece of paper out of university, <laughs> like myself. <laughs> and a lot of debt. <laughs> talking about Andy I, I mean I can't I can't think the amount of times that I've used my my you know O level in uh, Patagonian art studies of the wild <laughs> ah, mate yes. duck every it's, day it's brilliant yeah, yeah. It, it helped me so much <laughs> See, hey Jay Robbins in the chat hello mate hello how's it going great mm. job on that uh, taxi in the fin there Matt what a beautiful uh, rival that was really good nice that one isn't it yeah really good love the when they're on this end stand and that's uh, Jet 2 under tow as well. Um, so uh, I was hoping it was going to shift for us, but it looks like it's just on the move. One thing I did think is, imagine being one of the pilots of the air tanker, A330s. Because usually an A330 pilot, you're kind of doing long call, aren't you? Like Virgin <coughs> or Aer Lingus out of uh, Manchester. But they're just doing sort of short flights, aren't they? I mean, the longest flight they're probably going to do is down to Tenerife, which is probably they'll be back that night in their, maybe their own bed. Yeah. Depending on... Uh, Sounds, based. sounds good to me. Yeah. I've, I've said that you know our lot need to get 330s because the skies are full. You know, if you go on your, mm. you know, your flight radar, you, you know, you zoom out, you can see how full the skies are in the summer. We've all got horrendous slots, air traffic restrictions. The skies are getting quite full. Right. The only way you can get more people in the skies is bigger planes. So Jet Two have, have really, you know, got a got a good go thing going there with the, you know three years, four years, however long they've been doing this now, getting these big aircraft in, filling them up. Max economy, bucket spade routes, off you go. And uh, like we've said here before, you know, the Airbus still have all the tooling and all the jigs for the 380. They know that the skies are getting full. So you never know, that might might make a, uh, a re you know, reappearance at some point. Yeah. Um, Ian W's asking, is there an age limit on becoming a commercial pilot? He's wondering if it's too late for a career change in, in your 40s. There isn't an age limit. You have to retire at 65. The thing you've got to weigh up is... When you've paid for all your training, have you got enough time left to pay it all back? You know, there's not, <laughs> there's not a lot of people who've got under fifty thousand pounds sitting yeah. in the bank to throw away. So that's what you've got to weigh up. And I, I do know a guy at me last day, and he's one of the cabin crew. He um, he did it years ago. At um, I can't remember how old he was, late late thirties, early forties, I think. And he he did all his commercial stuff. Couldn't get a job. He, last I heard, he was driving coaches. Mm. Um, but so obviously there's a shortage at the moment. But yeah, you've got to weigh up that can you pay it all back in the time you've got left before you retire. And Natasha, thank you very much for gifting five airliners live memberships to the community on the stream today. That's absolutely awesome, putting us to 17 brand new VIPs. If you are enjoying the stream, guys, and you want to support airliners live, you want to support the content we create, please consider gifting some memberships to the community. It's the best way to do so, and it'll uh, really help the stream out as well. Thank you very much, Natasha. Uh, for gifting those membership, putting us on 17 brand new VIPs on today's show. Thank you, Natasha. And thank you, as always, for sharing the stream on the old X as well. I know there's a good handful of you folks who do it yeah. week in, week out. Really appreciate it. And a big welcome. Let's get some waves in the chat for Dave. Uh, he says, morning, guys. I watch Airliners Live every Sunday, uh, but it's my first time in the live chat. So nice to meet you all. Awesome to have you yes. in, Dave. And thanks for taking the steps to get involved in the chat. You won't regret it. And uh, let's fill that chat with wave emotes for all of our new viewers today. If you are new, guys, we'd love to welcome you into the community. Please feel free to get involved. This is the place to be on your Sunday morning 
live from Manchester Airport as we bring you all of the camera angles, all of the action, and a brand new huge thank out to our latest sponsor, Flight Radar 24, bringing you all of the latest information into the sh uh, stream as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, welcome in everybody. <clears throat> Bit of a uh, slump in uh, aviation action. We've got the British Airways shuttle service now holding on uh, two, three right. Now we've we've obviously we mentioned that we've upgraded the network uh, setup for Macam Smith, and we're confident it'll be able to withstand a few, you know, a bit better over on the south side. Thing is, though, this time of year now we're um, well, we're going into um, winter, uh, summer runway hours. And to be fair, on the Sunday, it's still going to be majority um, single runway ops. Uh, I think if they're on two threes, it'll be two three rights, arrivals and departures until 1 p.m. Now, obviously, at 1 p.m., they'll open up the uh, second runway. Um, and uh, that means that we can get some two three left uh, departures or zero five right arrivals. Um, I remember last year, we kind of dabbled with midweek shows, didn't we? So maybe mm -hmm. that's an option to look down. Um but obviously the thing is when we're expanding and having a multi-cam set up, it does increase the costs. So it uh, makes yeah. sense on a Sunday. <clears throat> Sam, thank you very much for also gifting five memberships to the community. Really appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers, Sam. Cheers for supporting the stream with the five <laughs> gifted memberships, putting us on 22 brand new VIPs on today's show. As we also welcome back uh, Abigail for 16 months of membership. Same morning, guys. Love when Captain Mark is on. Uh, we'll hopefully see you next month at the RVP uh, as we have a Sunday day trip planned. Great show. Thank you very nice. much. Appreciate that. I'm working on the RVP day. I'm trying to get the day off and I can't. All right. I'm not very happy about that. I've tried everything at the moment. No worries. No worries. That's Kuwait 320 on the way in, Leo. Oh, nice. Wonder when they will start seeing the wide bodies from them again because we've not really seen many of them lately. You know, the 330, 200, and the uh, 330 Neos as well. Remember last summer we've seen loads. It's quite rare to see the the three twenty Neo. There goes the BA shuttle service down to London Heathrow, second of the live show. We're going where the thing is just the three uh, three thirty is just now. the British Airways show in Simple Life. Hello, welcome to you. Uh, talking to the shuttle, I've met the BA shuttle in at Newcastle a few days ago. It was a friend of mine, old, old friend of mine, used to be an instructor years ago at Elstree. And he's a skipper on the 777 for BA. And we, we went into the city and had a bite to eat and a couple of beers and a catch-up. And uh, I was asking him all these questions about the 777. It's quite interesting, really. It's... Uh, but yeah, he loves it. He was on about the 300 and all the power it's got. It sounds, it sounds quite a beast. Nice. Should have seen the uh, 777 had departed as we were setting up this morning. The Qatar triple. Right. Barely used any runway. It was, it was off, know, in, off. off instantly. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Huge thank you to Lee Williams with the 10 Airliners Live gifted memberships. Coming into the show, putting us on 32 brand new VIPs. Let's get some love in the chat for Lee. Supporting the channel with 10 gifted memberships. And Tim Neverlucky returning for two months of business class membership. Thank you very much, Tim. And Sam returning with a membership upgrade to first class. Thank you very much, guys. That'll really help the channel as well. If you're maybe a premium economy member, you may be able to upgrade to business class, which will get you discount on merchandise. And it also supports the channel a bit more as well. And you can do that just from the perks page. So I think you just need to hit the dollar symbol again and just click see perks. And uh, you can upgrade your membership from there if you wish. And a huge thank you very much to Lee for the 10 gifted memberships. That really helps, mate. Thank you very much, Lee. But uh, just over Healed Green is the uh, Q8 A330. Uh, sorry, A320. Uh, next to land. Left six hours, 35 minutes ago. So that's too long on a 20 Neo, isn't it? 
<laughs> I was in Hill Green uh, the other week, actually. I was very disappointed my favourite Indian restaurant's closed down. Oh, I was no. going to pop in and, uh, and feed myself, but no, it's closed. So very sad. Flying horse is nice, though. Is like it? Hungry horse pub, yeah. Oh, Just yeah, yeah. Don't realise how, how close you are to the, 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 the threshold <laughs> there. You know, planes flying over, almost taking the chimney off the roof. Hey, Jeff Simpson, tuning in from the Gold Coast, Australia. Welcome to you. See that Scandinavian Neo taxiing out as well. well. I was in a Neo the other day, it was nice. I like the Neo, it's all right. Mm. It's all right. Sounds like a big hairdryer. They are very uh, modern sounding, aren't they? And yeah. a lot quieter. Yeah. I uh, just need to give Tass a hand with some audio. Um, so I'll be right back. But very first, before I do, play a quick Oh, wow. Huge. Lorry, thank you very much for gifting 10 Airliners Live memberships to the community. Thank you so much. And yeah, apologies, my, my audio has been quiet because I must have knocked it. Cheers, guys. Uh, Lorry gifting 10 memberships to the community. Absolutely incredible. Let's get some love in the chat for all this VIP support coming into the stream today, folks. It really helps the channel immensely. So thank you very much. Putting us on 42 brand new members, only eight members away from the big 5-0. Wow. I'll be uh, I'll be right back as I give uh, Tass a hand. I'm going to leave you on zoomed in for the moment, Andy. No stress. Yeah, I mean, I know you're not a big fan of the Maxes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were flying on that down to there and back with Tenerife. Um, on the same plane, incidentally. Uh, Echo India HGM Hotel Golf oh, November. Yeah, yeah. EIHGM. And, um, yeah, the same, same, you know, leap, leap engines, right? And yeah. So quiet yeah. in the cabin, especially when you're in front of them, you know, like up near the front of the plane. Yeah. I think we were on row seven, which on, on the Maxes is pretty far forwards. Lovely view of the engines as well. Nice yeah, big. it's a big, big difference in fuel burn. Big difference. Yeah. Um, on, on the longer flights, you know, if you're sticking on a Belfast, it's not going to make much difference. But, uh, you know, when you're sitting there for a few hours, I mean, that, you know, six and a half hours like that Kuwait, that's, that's a big difference in the fuel burn. And Jet 2 will be finding that out with their 321s. Um, yeah. You know, the 7.5 burns an awful lot more fuel, about a tonne an hour more. And um, so, you know, when you're looking at 800 quid a tonne, whatever it is, it's, uh, it's big money. It's probably going to get more expensive as well as time goes on, and that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, Lee's, Lee Davis, yeah, I can't call it uh, my, my favourite, my little nickname for it. I can't do that on the stream. <laughs> have a nickname for it but yeah the max yeah oh yes yeah, I can't yeah. say on the string <laughs> <laughs> nervous flyers mm. yeah mm. but no it was alright I mean the only slightly disappointing thing about these new planes is I don't know the, the, the expectation shouldn't be there but you, you are expecting a bit more of a more modern sort of seat and, a more, and obviously it's just an economy yeah. and it's just you know packed in like sardines but I've heard people fly on the um, 321 Neos at Jet 2 and really excited and they've got like nice lighting and so do the Ryanair Maxes by the way yeah. they have gorgeous lighting but <laughs> then you sit down and yeah it's not not the best <laughs> yeah I mean when, when the Neo was announced we were all oh excellent we're, we're going to get a modern flight and get a 380 flight deck and all of that and uh, you know the Max was announced they're going to get the, like a 787 screens all that oh yeah everyone's excited and we've, we've still got the same screens from the 1980s I've seen a couple of uh, Pilots in the UK, uh, Airbus pilots tweeting about these new uh, radio console uh, upgrades. Yeah. That, uh, they're quite Airbus good. Have. I've not they're, seen them. What's that? The the, R, the uh, ACP and the RMP and the uh, the radios have all changed into an integrated unit. Same as what you've got the 315, 380. Got you. Yeah. So you've got the transponder in it. You've got um, the the radios. You've got all the nav kit on there, and it's all in one box now. Nice. And it's digital, and you type it in rather than twiddling knobs. Um, there is an interface coming, or well, we're supposed to be getting, I think the other airlines, you know, proper airlines do have it, where when you've got your CPDLC running and say Amsterdam, you know, say, right, call Ryan on this frequency, they send you it through, call Ryan on this frequency. And there is an interface where you can press a button, it will load that frequency into your radios on the standby, and all you've got to do is flick it over and dial it in. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, yeah, it, it, they are there. There have been a few issues with them. And there is a there used to be a feedback form if you're having problems with them, yeah. and I do know one of the FO, yeah there is digital audio. One of the lads was saying that uh, his mate in Bristol, I think, had one that uh, failed. Yeah, digital audio troubleshooting of humming noise issue, and there it is. 
That's awesome. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. Like yeah. that. Yeah. Reminds me of a Cessna system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you've got the Garmin 1000. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this is one of the funny things, you know, you, you get all these, all these lads are coming in, you know, these, these, these you know, new cadets are coming straight in from flight school. And they've done the IR training, whatever, on, on the, um, the Diamond Twin stuff. And they've got twin Garmin 1000, you know, kit in, in the aircraft, the artificial rise, and all this, you know, all the great big screens that do everything. Yeah. And then they come into this aircraft, which was designed in the 80s, and it hasn't really, you know, the, all right, the screens are slightly bigger and better. But there's no real change, and they're sort of sitting there looking at it like, what's, what's this? <laughs> Where's all my toys? <laughs> you haven't got them, they're gone. Yeah, I think on the older Cessnas, they look similar to that. Yeah. The other ones that have still got the, the proper boxes. Yeah, yeah, I remember those from the, the big old clunky uh, the transponder where you're actually turning a wheel rather yes. than uh, yeah, typing in numbers. Yeah, it's just like that. <laughs> Iberia Express, welcome in. From Manchester, arriving in from Madrid, and uh, next to depart Ryanair flight out to uh, Poland. And Matt's also got the uh, three fit, three thirty as well pulling in. What's going on? Oh, Tina's south side this afternoon. When am I flying? Uh, I think, I think it's about ten to four. We take off to uh, to Keflavik. Late so I'll give you a wave. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Luckily, it's only like a couple of hours up there, so um, it's... Uh, How long is that flight? Uh, I will, I'll, hang on, I will, I'll tell you exactly. It's, it's longer than you think it is, isn't it? It looks close on the map, but it's... Yeah. Is it just a one sack today for you? No, today? it's there and back, so okay. it's two. Yeah, it's two hours 22 on the way up. Oh, right, OK. And on the way back, it is uh, two hours 24. I remember that time when we had them Ethiopian... Um, Dash eights coming in from oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keflavik, and they just took ages to get here from there. Yeah. Just, again, you know, having the jets, they go significantly faster, but the prop planes do take a while. Yeah. The the other thing is, that, you know, Keflavik's a funny old place. Obviously, I mean, I've, I've been up there when I was at my last airline. They used to uh, base us up there from time to time. You you can see all four seasons in an hour up there. Mm. Um, the other problem you've got is because you're going over this big. Sp uh, stretch of water. It's when you go down to the Canaries. Sometimes you go off the south coast of the island and you go down the what's called the Tango route. There's these airways, these motorways in the sky. It's Tango Nine, Tango Two Ninety, and you need special um, clearances for it. So you have to use the HF radio. So instead of using, we normally use a VHF radio, which is line of sight, to use HF. So what you're actually doing is you're bouncing the radio waves off the ionosphere to talk to someone who's on the other side of the planet. I mean, you could talk to someone in Australia with it if you've got wow. the right frequency. That's wild. So what you have to do before you go anywhere, you have to um, call up Stockholm Radio. They have to position their transmitter receiver, and then they do a thing called a cell call check. All aircraft have a four-letter code. Um, which is the cell call. So they'll dial this in and it'll ring in the flight deck. So when you're on HF, you don't want to be listening all the time because all you hear is really loud static. Oh, no. So you ha they can call you. It's like a phone call. Um, so you make sure that's working. And then for Tenerife and the Canaries, you talk to um, Shannon, Shanwick sometimes, um, and then you get a clearance. You're not actually talking to a, a full air traffic controller. You're talking to someone who issues these clearances. So it has to be read in a certain format, in a certain order. If you don't do it right, they'll get you to do it, keep saying it until you get it right. And with Iceland, um, there is a bit of that. There's a, a Shanwick Oceanic uh, control area that with, we, we don't go in it very much because you're limited to 29,000 feet unless you've got special bits of kit on the aircraft, which we don't. So what we do, we go up um, and we talk to uh, Reykjavik Oceanic uh, CTA, the bird, FIR as it's called. But you've got to, you know, you've got to have a working HF radio um, for most of it. And, you know, you can, because you're not actually going the oceanic bit, you can get away without the HF, but it's a good idea to have it. You have to get these special clearances. You have to call up a point called, well, before, well before a point called Baku, and then it changes to a place called Ratsu. And it's, it's just a lot more work um, making, you know, calling all these people up, getting these clearances. And actually on the ground, Iceland, you don't get a normal clearance like you do here, where it's like, oh, it's a Pie Fall Rome, uh, Pole 5 Romeo and Runway 2 3 right. There, they'll give you a clear, an airways clearance as well. So it's slightly different, makes life a little bit more interesting up there. And we're often listening to the scanner in the office and when we're here at the RBP and stuff. 
And one thing that, like, I, I didn't realise was how clear you said that the ATC communications can be when you're on the plane as a pilot. Yeah. Versus, like, if I'm stood here at, at the airport with a scanner, it's often quite hard to hear what they're saying. You know, it's quite, you know, staticky and it's crazy, isn't it? Like, they have a lot more better signal. Yeah, we, we covered that in that uh, VIP video we did the other day about the quality because obviously when we were doing the talking people down, the static on the radio and yeah. people stepping on each other made life a little bit more difficult. Um, but yeah, on the, on the aircraft, the, these radios are mega expensive mm. and they've got to be crystal clear because you know, you're know you talking about a radio clearance where people's lives are depending on it, right. especially if it's a, you know, a quick one. Some, occasionally you hear you know, such and such a call sign, turn left 20 degrees immediately, turn left 40 yeah. degrees yeah. immediately. Yeah. And, they, you know, the, the air traffic systems have picked up. You've got an issue and you need to get someone out of the way sharpish. There's, there's a few times where I've gone onto these, like, live ATC websites, you know, like the playback in the archives. Maybe there's been, like, an incident or something. You're trying to listen back. You're like, how on earth do these pilots decipher what they're saying? Like, all I'm hearing is... Yeah, we know, haven't like, got that on the aircraft. It's, yeah, it's pretty clear. Yeah, ground yeah. base, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if you, you know, if you do get static or interference on a frequency, sometimes you do, and you just tell them, you know, we've got loads of static, and enough people report it, they'll say, right, use the backup frequency. Yeah, and they'll change it. Occasionally, you'll hear um, breakthrough if you've got, you know, a nice warm summer's day, high pressure, and uh, you'll get breakthrough. Sometimes, you know, you, you'll dial in your frequency, and you can hear, say, the Atis from Amsterdam or, or something from a long way away. And it's just again, it's the radio waves bouncing off um, temperature inversions or part, things in the atmosphere, and you're picking up when you don't really want to be. But uh, it, it's it's quite funny to listen to sometimes. There's a 75 uh, taxis out. Let's have a quick check on our A380 for the day, shall we? Uh, currently at 40,000 feet wow. on the way to us uh, here at Manchester. Looking forward to seeing this arrive in approximately one hour's time. And as you can see, it's just uh, south of Cologne at the moment uh, on the way out to us. Two awesome Jet 2 planes departing. First of all, an A330 200 series. And clouds in the background looking awesome. Don't tend to use much runway then. Although I can imagine there's probably a lot of passengers on board and a lot of suitcases. Not a lot of fuel though. Yeah, that's Not a good point. Yeah, yeah. It's usually quite a, a big weight, isn't it? Yeah. Fuel. Yeah, it will be on the, the length, you know, distances those things fly. Oh, it's flypigs.com. There you go. <laughs> and uh, where do we get up to? Uh, Sasha McCarthy, thank you very much for the 28 months. Of membership saying I've got my 28 month membership. Thank you so much, Sasha. Really appreciate that. And Moonlight uh, with a two month saying uh, it went so fast. Uh, so nice to meet you guys at TAS. Thank you very much, Moonlight. Really appreciate that. And uh, thanks to everyone supporting the stream today. Hope you're doing well, folks. We are at 43 members, only seven brand new VIPs away from 50, which is absolutely incredible. Thank you, everybody. But uh, down on Matt Camp. It's uh, all systems go now. It's just aircraft moving all over the place, Matty boy. Yes, lots of aircraft pushing back now, mate. As I said earlier, a lot on the stands, a lot on the apron, so uh, making way for uh, a lot of uh, aircraft on the taxi now. Plenty of action to come. Nice. Yeah, I can see plenty of aircraft pinging up. And this aircraft that you've got tracking on there is a Turkish uh, A321 on the way out to Istanbul. And in front of that, you also had the Tui Dreamliner, which was uh, taxiing out to um, Bridgetown, which we'll be seeing on the departure very, very soon. But just touching down for us on the main runway, and from, uh, are we going to guess one of the two? We'll go for Munich. <laughs> <laughs> Lufthansa A319. Thank you very much for uh, all your support coming in, though, guys. Malky with the gifted membership, and Pia also with the gifted membership. Thank you very much, folks. I've got a good question here from the flying architect. He's asking, in a TCAS situation, do you follow the TCAS instructions or ATC? And if what would you do if you've got opposite? 
Um, well, we, we covered this in the, one of the, Fleer, the first Fear of Flying video, I think it was. Possibly the second yeah. one as well. Yep. Um, TCAS is Traffic Collision um, Alert System. So if you are getting very close to another aircraft, the, T, the, the, the two bits of kit called the transponder, transmitter responder, they will talk to each other. And you will always follow the TCAS because the two planes work it out between each other. One will say climb, one will say descent. ATC won't have that information. So you ignore ATC and you do what, you, you do what the TCAS says. And the new ones, the new uh, um, Airbuses we're getting, they've got autopilot TCAS, so they'll actually fly the manoeuvre for you. Wow. Um, whereas they, they were finding that sometimes when pilots were doing it, they were getting to turn the flight directors off. They were, you know, it, it was, they, it was, it, autopilot TCAS will take care of it for you. But you always follow the TCAS instructions. So my transponder will talk to the Lufthansa's transponder and it will say, who are you, where are you? And it will work it out between. One will, one will fly and one will descend. Now, years ago, this, this really came to a head. I've been going back a few years now, over um, Austria way, I think it was, somewhere Germany. There was a DHL 757, a Russian Tupolev, on a collision course. The controller was trying to work too many sectors on his own because they didn't have any staff. And he'd given the Tupolev uh, instructions, which went against the TCAS. And instead of following the TCAS, the Tupolev followed the air traffic controller's instructions mm. and it did not end well no and now we train this regularly i mean i've just done it in the simulator uh, a few weeks ago and we had a tcas and the, the autopilot tcas kicked in and did it all and you just monitor it but yeah you always follow the tcas instructions another beautiful uh, 757 on the taxi out on mat cam on the way out to alicante and just touching down the easyjet a320 in from amsterdam yes nice yeah. busy airport now yeah for that video we were editing, we were finding sound clips of it, you know, in action. It's loud, isn't it? That voice that yeah. kind of shouts at you, traffic, traffic. Yeah, yeah so it wakes you up, all right. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> initially you'll get a, a what's called a, a, a TCAS advisory, TA, and it'll go traffic, traffic. Yeah. And, you know, you cover the controls, you have a look, right, TCAS are controller. If it's TCAS autopilot, you've got TCAS blue because it's armed. Anything blue is armed. And, you, you know, you know your pilot monitoring will now start looking for the aircraft, giving you, you're right, it's your one o'clock, thousand foot below climbing, and you start looking and keep, keep your eyes on the instruments. And then all of a sudden, you know, it'll just kick in, you know, it'll go climb, climb now, or descend, descend now. Oh. And the autopilot TCAS will kick in, you'll have um, TCAS armed and off it, it, it'll activate and off you go. Otherwise, autopilot off, flight director's off, bird on, order for us speed. And you fly it on the vertical speed on the right hand side of your primary flight display. It'll have a green section and you put the VSI, the vertical speed needle in the green, not in the red. And you've got to be careful because if you over, overdo it, it'll go into red higher up and you may get another TCAS or someone who's above. So then it'll, like, it'll like monitor vertical speed or level off or descend, descend now. Oh dear, Jeez. Macy. You're like, <laughs> but it, it keeps you, you know, it's great. It keeps you alive. It's it's really, really clever. Tango Alpha on the uh, reg of that EasyJet as well, as we were talking about <laughs> TA. <laughs> well, funny enough, I remember years ago, um, I think America brought it in as absolutely mandatory. All, all commercial traffic have to have it. And they had a nightmare with Concorde because we were still flying at the time because it goes so fast they couldn't get it to work. Uh. And, you know, it, it, obviously at lower levels, you can, you know, lower speeds, you can get it to work. But at the speeds that flies, it needed to be at working. I, I can't remember how they got around it, but they had, a, they had a right nightmare with it. I think they got dispensation to keep flying for a while until they sorted it all out. All right. That's interesting. Maybe that's one for um, Heritage Concorde, who maintain the likes of Alpha Charlie here at, at the RVP. If you are enjoying today's stream, folks, feel free to uh, click that like button as well. Really helps us uh, stream out a lot. Really appreciate having you all in today. Over 2,700 live viewers on the stream. Welcome, everybody. And uh, Rob, uh, returning business class member for three months, saying uh, thank you for your Sunday shows. Love them. Cheers, Rob. Thank you very much, mate. And we do have another 757 on the taxi out, so we're going to be turning the audio up really loud for that. We're going to get that nice screaming departure for you guys. And... Uh, Plenty of action here at Manchester. Hope you're enjoying the Super Sunday show as we bring you all the angles. This is your place to be on a Sunday morning. If you are new to Airliners Live today, we stream from Manchester Airport three times a week. And uh, 
we love it. We love our Sunday shows, especially because we can bring you all of the um, views. And let us know in the chat, guys, what are your initial thoughts on the Flight Radar 24 integration? Give us your honest feedback in the chat if there's anything you'd like to see. Yeah. We do have things in the works, um, but if you've got any sort of feedback initially on it today, it is my first time trying to operate it today. I'm trying to mix it in as much as I can, but I, I am on like a bit of an octopus down here at the moment. Um, but I think I think we're using it quite well so far. Busier than the one on taxi driver crabs at the moment. Oh, so <laughs> <honestly. laughs> Can you play the piano? Yes. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that on stream. Mm -hmm. People probably were like, you are. <laughs> I can. Play Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> <laughs> Play Happy Birthday backwards. <laughs> I seen Rob also said that there's plenty of 757 fans in the chat today. Oh, yes. There's one very big 757 fan in the uh, tower today as well. Our special guest, Captain Mark. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's a, it's a great bit of kit. I was talking to an engineer the uh, night before last when we got back to, from Tenerife, and he, it was his first type he actually worked on. He was saying how lovely it was and how, how good it was for engineers, and how, you know, the 73 said it was a nightmare because it was a so small and you end up banging yourself, you know, just trying to climb through things. Mm. But yeah, he didn't get that with 75. He was, he, he was saying he actually worked on, I can't remember which ones, but. The company he was working for, they had the rollers, but they also had the Pratt & Whitney's. And I was asking him about, because I was always told that the Pratt & Whitney engines used to surge if you go above 41,000. He said, yeah, you used to have surge problems with those that you didn't with the rollers. Oh. Here we go. And yes, uh, feel free to come and grab one of the flight radar tags uh, after the stream if you can, if you can hang around till we finish. We're going to be wrapping up about half 12 today, so uh, if you can come over after then, we can uh, sort you out with one of those. Uh, Stevie saying, morning fellas, great stream as usual, loved Captain Mark on the show, it was very informative, and the flight radar integration is first class, keep up the good work lads. Um, any chance you can do pitch and pitch with flight radar? Absolutely Andy, I just didn't have time to set it up this morning, but what I want to do is have the flight radar full screen, just to make it easy to read, and picture in picture our main camera feed. Um, it just gets a bit awkward when the thing I'm showing on flight radar is on Mac camp and there's no way of hot swapping picture in picture on this setup but yeah there's a few things we can do especially with the main camp um, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it um, random saying the flight radar 24 collab is amazing loving it awesome yeah so some good feedback on uh, on it excellent I oh, really Elder Soul I've not seen that Mental Pilot has a very interesting video on why the 757 production was stopped yeah, it's a shame. And, you know, we spoke about it lots on the stream, you know, that it would be nice to see it return. I'm sure there is the possibility, but obviously Boeing kind of have their hands tied with, with other projects, and I don't think they see the uh, the need in returning such a plane. It's also be a very expensive project, wouldn't it, to return to, pro uh, to production? But I'm sure the 75 would uh, help out with a lot of problems that uh, Boeing are experiencing these days. <laughs> Uh, I do keep hearing rumours that, that you know they they need a replacement for it because the Max 10 just isn't going to do the job, mm. and the 321 XLR is you know it's selling lots. It, it's yeah. it's not a 75, but it's it's very very capable. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed it, Big Red. Thank you. Like you said, you know, airlines do need that extra capacity, and yeah. 75 has more capacity than the A321. Yeah, it carries the same amount of people. Does um, it? Yeah, it'll carry, you, know, you can put 235 in both. Oh. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the 75 will go, you know, it, it's got more power, it goes, climbs quicker, it goes up higher. There we go, 75 lining up, ready to go on its way out to Alicante. 29 years old, Alpha November on the reg. It's 
explain the audio what for this, shall we? Oh, Ron. I, I turn it off for the intro and I always forget to turn it back on. I might just leave it on for the intro from now on. Beautiful. Salad nuts. Sounded great, didn't it? Yeah, of course, uh, rumours that 7.5s won't be with us for much longer. I don't think anything's official, but um, it would be nice to get another flight or two, you know, this year on the 7.5s. If if somebody is uh, wanted to fly on it, this year would definitely be the best bet for you, just in case they do disappear this winter. Uh, that's with Jet 2 anyway. Seems like Iceland Air aren't really in a big rush to get rid of their 757s. I don't think there's a, a big disappearance on the horizon for them. Same with Condor as well. Seen a couple of them at uh, Tenerife. Chuck Morris, welcome to you. Awesome name. <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs> the visibility is really nice today. Like, it I'm, is, isn't I'm it? I'm really not used to this. I'm really used to just <laughs> like, a wall of rain and fog and snow and all the weathers. Germany. Looks like it'll be a nice day to fly then, Mark. I'll be dark by the time I get coached. <laughs> <laughs> look at the visibility. Uh, look at the face. It's great. I'll, I'll, I'll forget to see the northern lights. That'll be all right. Oh, yeah. That'll be worth it. I mean, you actually get to see them up your ends, don't you? Yeah, where I live. Yeah, I just saw them up the other week. I just took some pictures out my bedroom window and, uh, yeah, you can see them quite clearly. That's mad. I think Martin's the same as me. Like, I've, I've never seen them, ever. No. But they do... Uh, happen at Anglesey quite a bit so you never know you never know yeah I think when you're in there sort of flying above the Atlantic and things you do have a good chance to, to see him out the window of the plane do you don't yeah. you if you're looking the right way and there was a good time lapse of them um, I can't remember I think it was a 380 coming out of America somewhere and as yeah. they went up sort of north they were really active and uh, they did a time lapse of them put this video up it was absolutely outstanding wow yeah I remember when uh, we were coming back from Austin the British Airways A350 it was dark and there was some activity over the North Atlantic just had our heads glued to the window <laughs> didn't see anything <laughs> looking out the window for like three or four hours <laughs> <laughs> We've got that Aurora watch app, so it pings up if there's a if there's a solar flare. It tells you that you know the activity's up. So we just that's it, straight up the hill, get some pickies. <laughs> nice. I've heard that the best place to see them isn't Iceland, though. It's actually like the Norwegian fjords, apparently. Really? Okay. Yeah. People say they've been to Iceland a few times and not seen them. Maybe it's overcast. I think the weather's just the main issue. Whereas up in Norway, it's a bit more likely. Dad's Secret Kitchen saying, I love the video you did on Friday with the 600mm lens. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I actually really like that video. I'm uh, glad a lot of you guys enjoyed it. There's been a few people saying, oh, we need to do more photography videos. They're really good. Yeah, yeah, well, so it was a good we'll, video. Uh, we'll definitely do some more of those. You should have brought your, your new toy with you and showed it to the stream. I know, <laughs> I know. I, uh, I, said, I said, right, I'm going to treat myself something for me wildlife photography. It lasted half a day before I brought it into work. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it is good, though. Yeah, talking of Iceland there. Eh? I know. Mm. A United playing today. Yes, they're, they're playing Liverpool, which is uh, at Old Trafford as well. So hence the reason why we're, we're finishing a little bit early today, just to avoid that uh, traffic chaos. Mm. In from uh, Reykjavik, Iceland Air, 737 Max, with them purple tail on today. Yeah. Uh, Paul, we're based at Manchester Airport, mate, so we stream three times a week from Manchester. What's this going in next? Looks quite big. Uh, yeah. Let's have a look. Virgin. 3.30. May 3.30. In from uh, Orlando. Amazing. 
And Owen, thank you very much for gifting a membership. Appreciate that, mate. Yeah, the lens was a bit silly, wasn't it, Amy? <laughs> yeah. It's good, though. Them photos were amazing. Like, the detail shots of the winglets and the, yeah. the wheels. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I might do, um, like, a little editing tutorial as well sometime. I want 600mm lens to do my astrophotography, but... Yeah, I uh, got a picture of Saturn with it. Did you? I was buzzing about, yeah. <laughs> And my dad as well returning to premium economy membership. Wait, what? He's not. He's not, he's been, not been gifted, gifted one. Whoa. What? No. <laughs> What's going on? Did he I, think, I think he's waited a couple of weeks and he's he's given in now. <laughs> <laughs> John Gilbert, thank you very much for gifting a membership as well. Appreciate that. So the premium. Something bonds. must have changed with the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> he's had enough. Give him someone else. Oh, wow. And the uh, Prince, thank you very much for four months of Twitch membership. Really enjoying your streams. Keep up the good works, guys. Greetings from Germany. Cheers, everyone. If you are watching on Twitch, uh, please don't forget to check those Twitch Primes. Or if you can, support the channel with a sub. Really does help us out, help cover the cost of streaming to Twitch as well. I know we have a lot of lurkers on Twitch, but if you can check those primes, guys, we'd really appreciate it. Lady Stardust on the name after that star talk that we had there. Anyone see the uh, Starship launch, SpaceX? I didn't. I was kicking myself that I missed it. It's pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> and Hayden, cheers for the five, mate. Saying great to hear my North Korean Airways colleague, Captain Mark, with you today. You absolute <laughs> bunch of legendary bosses. <laughs> Yeah, Hayden's got a job with the, uh, obviously, the North Korean airline I fly for. So we're both working for the same lot now, so it's good. <laughs> oh, and Das Pub gifting five memberships on Twitch. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much for that. That's awesome. Thank you. How many members are we on on uh, YouTube? On new members? Twitch, or, oh, on YouTube new members, we are on 48. Two VIPs away from 50 brand wow. new members on the street. Let's have a listen to this 330. <laughs> Your uh, waterproofing on the top mic, I think. Uh, no, the bottom mic. Bottom mic. You, you, you know. <laughs> I think Andy's got used to just decoding my non-English these days. He knows what it is. He just stuck his phone up. like, yeah, no, I mean, don't the, struggle the, anymore. The pig is in the sty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Staff announcements. Oh, Matt's got a uh, nice pushback on the way as well. Oof, nice. 757. 757. Oh, my God. I need to go home. <laughs> seven eight seven. <laughs> I got all excited there. Oh, uh, so, someone was typing in the comments and said, "Oh my god, that's not a that's not a seven five seven. How dare you?" Sharing it on Facebook, spotting flight radar. Why are you working with these? <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is, I, I I sometimes mix my words up. Is the problem like mm. what you probably did there? Like fully aware that it's a seven eight seven. The thing is, mate, I'm trying to switch cameras look at what you're doing zoom in on flight radar so i can get a picture of the information coming up shortly so i'm always thinking like three steps ahead yeah and sometimes my brain just says mate just have a sip of tea and just relax a minute have a brew it's yeah that's that's my problem i'm trying to do too many things at once to mess about rather than just focusing but i think it's getting to the stage, especially on the Super Sunday shows down here, where this is like, this is a job in itself 
producing, mixing the cameras, especially now with the flight radar integration, and to trying to present on top of that as well. Mm. It's it's just a lot, you know what I mean? It's so you're going to hear me probably quite a lot more mixing things up and you should employ your first officer to your, to your right there. That's right? it. Yeah, we need to uh, <laughs> just need to train somebody to press the buttons for free and <laughs> operate the radios. Yeah. <laughs> You could get a flying monkey in, couldn't you? <laughs> That's what they're talking about, getting in. Single pilots and a, and a monkey. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. The pilot's job is, uh, well, the monkey's there to make sure the pilot doesn't press any buttons, and the pilot's job is to feed the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jen, <laughs> please. I would love to train you how to press the buttons. Boop and a boop and a bing bong. But I think the other issue with that is, because we have, there's been a, a couple of people, oh, I'll come down and I'll do it for you, but... I've kind of got such an idea of how I want the shows to look that it's hard to let somebody else do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a bit, I don't know. It's like editing, isn't it? Like with the airliners lounge, you know, editing and writing the videos and stuff, they take a long time. And, you know, we could get someone else to help us, but it's just all our style, isn't it? You know, like mm. you're creating your own style and stuff, and that's priceless. Why don't you get a cat in and walk across the keyboards? And... That'd be good. They'd be good at the bus. A roulette of what, what camera we get. <laughs> oh, we've got, we've got a blank screen. Hey. <laughs> Short bed airlines. The current bit of L really likes that uh, tail scheme. And was saying, did I say monkey or mankini? No, it was definitely monkey, although <laughs> I did get a mankini. <laughs> threatening people that I'd wear it. Have you got one of the aprons yet? Speaking of mankinis. The cooking aprons. Have we what? Has Mark got a cooking apron yet? No. Aww. I don't think so. Mate, no. we'll sort you one out, because you do a lot of cooking at you home. You do, you're, you're a bit of a chef, you are. I used to. Not at home very much now, me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! Oh yeah, that that, that used some runway. It did straight up, didn't it? Like a rocket. Yeah. Starship launch. Standoff on Max Cam as well. A three thirty Dreamliner. Oh, that's a nice shot, Matty. Yeah, check out our uh, merch store, folks. We've got plenty of new items on there that you may not have seen yet, including the uh, cooking aprons. Rate my scran. Uh, 10 out of 10 scran in, in production. Yeah, and we've just reduced uh, the prices of our T-shirts and our hoodies. So if you want to go and pick one up, now's the time to do it. Head to Airliners Live or Airliners.live. And uh, we've also got uh, shopping bags in stock as well, sort of bag for life, nice material bags. And uh, we've, as Andy said, we've also got the uh, cooking aprons in stock as well. If you want to put a submission in, rate my scran on the Discord. I'd recommend it today because tomorrow is our shipping day as well. So it'll get posted out yes. tomorrow if it's in stock. Any in stock orders you place today will be shipped out tomorrow. So, uh, And we've also just got a load of the car air fresheners in as well, which are really good, actually. I've uh, I've got one in my car. I absolutely love it. I say to put mine up. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Head over to airliners.live. And if you're a business class VIP, you also get discount on our merchandise store as well. So that's certainly an incentive to maybe sign up for business class rather than premium economy if you want to get yourself some merch. And the uh, TUI Dreamliner, which is uh, pushed back there, is on the way out to uh, Montego Bay. And uh, there's a couple of Virgin Atlantics. One that just arrived in, but the one next to it is pinging up as well. So fingers crossed we might see one of those moving very shortly. Yeah, loving this uh, Flight Radar 24 integration. Really nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're in talks with the team over at FR24 and uh, hopefully uh, some new things. We've got some really cool ideas in the works, actually, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, this is great. It's certainly an awesome start to uh, to the channel. It helps, doesn't it? And, and a lot of people like to watch while having radar open and give them us heads up and things. So you're more than welcome to do that. Of course, Flight Radar 24, you can get a free plan. You can just download it from the App Store. 
And let's have a look at the uh, 380, shall we, and see where we're up to on that. It's just crossing over the uh, English coast, south of Ipswich. That's nice. 30 minutes away, folks. That's relatively on time today, then. Mm. I think it's about quarter past 11 it's usually scheduled to come in at. That, that time, was it last weekend or the weekend before? I think it was last weekend when I wasn't here, when you and Matt were here. And you caught the two A380s, like, really close together. They were really close. <laughs> TCAS alert on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually, like, one after the other. I think it was one took off and then the next arrival was another A380. But I'm still yet to see the two A380s on the ground at once. It has happened a few times. I've seen it a couple of times, yeah. Have you? Yeah. I suppose you're, yeah. you're here more often than yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, one was broken. Uh, it was parked up by STS. It was there for a few days. It had a um, problem with the, one of the fuel pumps or the fuel system or something, and it was uh, apparently it was quite a big job to fix. And what, was it yeah. Manchester where they had that A380 where they opened the door and yes. it was armed? <laughs> yeah, and blew the slide on the, the slide uh, upper edge, took the edge out as well. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been going back. I'd have just been stopping here, going. Nah, I'd say oh, I think I'll stay in England now <laughs> forever. That must have been a shock for the uh, person who opened the door. Yeah. Yeah, it's happened. Uh, it happens from time to time. There's a few videos of it happening, but you've got procedures in place that it doesn't, and uh, you know sometimes things are missed. Doesn't it vary from airline to airline that particular procedure? Yeah, yeah. I, I, heard, I heard from uh, some Virgin cabin crew that that wouldn't really happen on a Virgin airliner, for example, just because how they they run things, you know. Yeah, procedure. I mean, they're, they're a lot of uh, you know they. They disarm the doors. The FO, I'm, I'm pulling up on a stand. You know, it's uh, it's Spanish doors, doors to Manuel. It's uh, disarm doors for arrival, and they do it. And you park up, and they call from the back and confirm on the flight attendant panel that the doors are disarmed. Then they call me and say, "Can you confirm door status?" And you can confirm the doors are disarmed. So there's a lot of steps. It's not there's just a like, lot of steps. Yeah. But when you go out of sequence, that's when an incident happens. And there was one a while ago I heard about where. There was the engineers had been on. Mm. They'd done a repair, and everyone was boxed up, ready to go. And then the captain realised that there was a a sheet out of the tech log, a white sheet that the engineers had. So we went bowling out and said, "Oh, we need to open the doors. We need all oh, the engineers need this bit of paper." Right. And in, with the pressure of it all, and the passengers, you know, you know, loud passengers, or whatever, what, you know, it just got missed, and the door was still armed. He opened the door, and <sighs> bang. Mm. Happened at our last airline. They had this. Uh, we used to go when we used to go to Djibouti. We had a Della Airlines rep, which was done for an airline called Della Airlines. And he was uh, this rep was uh, trying to be super helpful. And they pulled up on stand in Paris on the one of the round centre section uh, terminals. And uh, he jumped up and before the guys had had a chance to unarm the doors. He just decided to open the door to help them. And uh, yeah, that was that. That's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that slide comes out with a fair bit of force. Yeah. You know, it's, it, once they, once once it's fired and the air canisters go off, it it it. You did, you know. Luckily, the guy driving the air bridge was off to the uh, the left, so it missed him. But if he was standing in front of it, he would have yeah. uh, he would have had a very bad day. Andy Hitchin, upgrading to business class membership. Thank you very much, Andy. That'll help the channel a lot. Cheers for that. You've just unlocked discounted merchandise from our store as well. Yeah, make sure you use it, folks. <laughs> well, Architect mm -hmm. saying there was a PA-28 had a life raft in the back and some water leaked on it. And um, he triggered it and it inflated in the back of the PA-28. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Dreamliner on the taxi out. And uh, as we were discussing earlier on, Matt's caught the pushback of the Virgin Atlantic A330. Sweet. Just arriving in from Lisbon. Tap Air Portugal Embraer. Watermelon Airlines. And Dell 20, glad you're enjoying the stream. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yeah, Top Express usually send in the uh, Embraers these days to Manchester. You might see the odd A320 with them. And we are one gifted membership away from 50 brand new VIPs on today's show. Who is going to be that 50th member today? If you want to sign up to VIP, Hit the dollar symbol, then click membership if you're not a VIP already. And that goes towards supporting the content we create here on the channel. To bring you these uh, Super Sunday shows. Obviously, there's a lot more cost involved in these shows than there is, say, on a sort of 
older show that we used to do just with the camera and the encoder. But we think it makes for an awesome show for you guys at home. Lee saying, I like the, the RVP hot dogs, but I could eat about 10 of them. <laughs> Maybe we not had them for a while. They are quite nice, though. Yeah, I've not had one of them for ages. Well, they do them in the cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're big. All right. Massive, Jum mate. Jumbo hot dogs. Oh, I'm going over to see Tom and Anne when the show finishes. They're, they're supposed to be over there any time. Oh, yeah. So I might have to, uh, might have to indulge. The Airline is Live Society in the uh, cafe. <laughs> That's it. Oscar Mike on the reg of the Sun Express, 737 MAX 8. Or is Sun Express? I think it's one of them airlines. I don't call them Maxes. Is it? It's just a Dash 8. It's either them or uh, Corindon, one of the two. But they're not, they're not really formally known as Maxes, are they? I suppose it depends who you're asking. People prefer just to call them uh, the Dash 8s, 737s. Yeah, there's quite a few airlines trying not to call it a Max. Yeah. And Kev, gifting a membership. Thank you very much, mate. Making Duncan the 50th member of today's stream. Thank you so much. And Jess Parr gifting a membership to the community going to David George. Thank you so much, Jess. Really appreciate that. Um, we also had a gifted member coming in uh, from Jack uh, Harrison, gifting a membership to Penelope Bailey. Thank you very much, Jack. And uh, Roy also gifting a membership going to Neil D. Thank you very much, folks. That's very kind of you all putting us well above the 50 gifted memberships for today with 53 brand new Airliners Live VIPs on the show today. Thank you so much. Tom and Anna in the chat. I'm looking in the cafe. I can't see them. Hey, Not Neil D, no worries, mate. Absolutely no worries. Normally in that little... Uh, yeah, walk, I, I in the corner, him. aren't they? Yeah. I can see Tom. He's got it. Oh, is that Tom? Oh, no, it's no, not. No, it's not. Someone else nabbed their table. Oh, there'll be oh, trouble. It, there'll be, there'll be trouble. <laughs> and Mike Freeman. Thank you, mate. Gifting a membership. Lots of gifted memberships coming in. If every person in the chat, just one person, sorry, if every person in the chat just gave one Airliners Live membership, that would be a huge amount of support for today. That'd be wild. Thank you, everybody, gifting the memberships there. And that Mike Freeman dropping a gifted membership to the community. Air Lingus Regional coming in from Belfast on this St. Patrick's Day Sunday show. British designated. <laughs> and Bebs, thank you, Bebs. Gifting the membership has gone to Stuart John. Hayden also gifting the membership to the community. Cheers, mate. Beautiful. And I blame me dad. Jumping on the gifty train as well. Lots of love and support coming in, folks. Let's keep it rolling if we can. And just pulling on to stand there. Portugal Embraer on Matcam, followed in by the Sun Express. You guys throwing in lots of love and support to the channel. 57 brand new VIPs now. Cheers, Sean. Great to have you with us, mate. Brand new viewer to the channel. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. It fell over. Oh, 
Oh, now we're, now we're talking. We've got two G-Miner rolling, but we've also got the Sun Express just pulling onto the best stand that Matt's got. Let's see if we can boost switch over to that. Awesome views today at Manchester Airport. It's so busy. There's always just something on the move. Absolutely. And Sue's gifting a membership. Thank you very much, Susie V. Chris also gifting a membership. Uh, one, two, three, four. Joining the gifty trainer as well. And Kev Redman, a brand new Airliners Live VIP. Welcome in, guys. Lots of love and support. Thank you so much for all these gifties coming in. As we say, every one of you gifting a membership would go absolutely miles on the channel thank you very much everybody and delicious food o2 with a twitch prime as well returning for two months of support thank you so much mate and as you can see on matt cam smith the virgin atlantic a330 out to orlando is now on the taxi out as andy hitchin also joins that gifted train lots of love coming into the chat thank you Oh, wow. Now we've got something special. Singapore A350 on the push. It's all going now, Matt. <laughs> it's all going now. It's the match show now. It is. I think he's muted his mic. Oh, oh, there he is. He's here. Oh, happening now. Helen also gifting a membership. Thank you so much, Helen. Really appreciate that. So, Matt, it's been a, a few weeks since you've been up there. How, has anything changed? Is there any more progress on that new pier at all? Or... Any, anything significant? Um, I can show you one or two structures that have been put in place now, chaps. Just let this Singapore push back and I'll give you a quick uh, tour of some new sightings on the apron here. You can just give me two sets. Sounds great. We're loving having the, uh, the apron come back. No, this 350 shot yeah. is just nuts as well. Yeah. We've spoken. Oh, no, battery's about to go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's. No joke. No cap. No cap. Battery's about to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. How many mods are outside the tower now? <laughs> <laughs> Just look at that door over there. Just like, oh, it's gone. It's gone. Stand by, chat. We'll get Matt back on. The timing. <laughs> All these people standing out there with a the cake. Ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come and bang on the door, bring it on. Don't no, don't <laughs> Matt's mate's giving him a lift. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Tom and I are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Jake, returning for 38 months of membership as well from Lurker's Corner tuning in. Welcome, Jake. Great to see you, mate. Hope you're doing well. A couple of Ryanairs. We're back, we're back. Over there we're as well. Back. You're back. Welcome I'm, back. I've not got you back. Let me fix you, my end. We're back, bro. In the meantime, back, I can bro. see a, a version of Atlantic A330 on the uh, taxi out here on main camp. Maybe a question for you, that uh, Mark in the chat from Neil. Yeah, that is a yeah. quite a technical question. Oh yeah, coming when, from the pylon leading. Uh, when you see a thin stream of something coming from where the engine pylons join the leading edge of the wing, is that some kind of vents bypass or is that just uh, compensation? Oh right, what on takeoff? I, I presume. No, yeah, I think maybe it, on landing as well. Yeah, take off landing. Yeah, um, it's um, it's a cloud. It's a little bit of um, it's a little vortex that um, sometimes forms. Hmm. Um, when you look at how a wing works, you've got low pressure on the top and high pressure or high pressure on the bottom. And the high pressure, if you've got some high and a low pressure, the high will always try and go to the low. Um, so the high pressure is underneath and it wants to go to the top. That's why you have the winglets that point up because it stops the flow from high to low around and if you see when it takes off in the you know when you know when you get the ribbons yep you've got the high spilling over to the to the low the bottom to the top but as the plane moves forward it twirls mm. because the wings now moved out the way 
and it's the same sort of thing. You're getting this this ribbon. It, it's 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 like a I wouldn't say a mini tornado, but it's a similar sort of thing. It's a little twirl of air. Now what happens is when you drop the pressure of air, you also drop the temperature. When you drop the temperature of air, it can't hold as much water. So when you get a moist day like today. You haven't got to drop the temperature much, and the water becomes usable. That's why you get the fluffy wings on takeoff, because just as they start to rotate, the wings are really giving a lot of lift. The pressure drops, temperature drops, cloud forms, and this is all that's happening. You're getting a um, a bit of low pressure, uh, high pressure air going to the top, and it's uh, it, the water's condensing out, and you can actually visibly see it. I think Mark's doing one of them YouTube challenge videos. How many times he can say moist in one hour? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah. He's got a bet on with his mates at Easy Jet. <laughs> <laughs> Start singing the lyrics to a song. <laughs> I hope the current Mrs. is eligible working because she wasn't watching because she absolutely hates that word. <laughs> Mike Richards also gifting a membership. All of your support putting us on 64 brand new VIPs. Thank you, everybody. Oh my days. Wow. Simple life. Simple life. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you very, very much. 20 gifted <laughs> memberships to the channel. Huge support. Huge Legend. support. Wow. Guys, fill the chat. Fill the chat with hearts. 10 out of 10s. Massive support on our YouTube channel. 20 gifted memberships. Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. That is a huge, huge amount of support for us. 84 brand new VIPs now on the channel. That's wow. wild. Thank you, Simple Life. It's great seeing you the wow. other month as well here at the RVP. Absolutely. Cheers. Um, that, that'll, uh, that'll go a long way on the channel. Thank you very much. Yeah, do appreciate it. Um, Chris 79's asking, are the newer Airbus aircraft similar in flight deck design as the 320s? Um, the 320 flight deck is pretty much unchanged as it, as it was when it first came out in the 80s. The screens are now LCDs instead of CRT, so a bit bigger and clearer. Um, the 380 and the 350 flight decks are more modern. The switches are the same, the panels are the same, um, the side sticks are the same, thrust levers are the same. There's more info on the screens. The FMGC has been replaced by a more modern system. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, when you if you Google the differences, you'll you'll see that, that you know the 353 has got great big screens. It's got all new um, new additions to make your life more easy and make you know you're flying safer. But the the idea is is that the Airbus is still cross you know you can you can fly one you can fly them all and because it's all fly by wire it goes through com a series of computers they're all supposed to handle fairly slim but they don't um, as we've said on here many times 319 handles a lot better than the 320 CEO which handles better than the 320 CEO with sharplets and the Neo handles better than the CEO so there, there is slight differences but. Uh, I'm told by an A380, ex-A380 captain that that's a beautiful aircraft to fly. He said it's very, very stable and responsive. It's nice. Um, but, yeah, the, the cockpit design has, has improved. And if you Google the different, you know, Google the flight deck of the 350, you'll see a big difference. But the, the, the buttons are the same. They're laid out the same. The, the logic is the same. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to when we finally get an updated flight deck in the 320. Beautiful pushback shot of the thin air embryo as well. Matt Cam doing an incredible job tracking all of these aircraft for us today. It's, uh, it's gone from zero to 100 pretty quick on the ramp. And as you can see, the gentleman to the right-hand side of the pushback truck has got a big bright cable which is connected into the side of the aircraft. That's an audio cable so that the pilots in the flight deck can talk to the ground crew and they can discuss things like the pushback and pass instructions to each other. So uh, that's the cable that you see in there. Just as this ATR arrives, we'll grab a very quick shot of that and then switch back to the fin air because I think that fin air is going to be pushed backwards all the way up the alley and uh, then it can just make the right hand turn. 
Yeah, he's just pinged up, it's getting closer. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, any merch questions, guys, you can just drop us an email just because I don't know off the top of my head. Please use the contact form on the website and I can just get the right answer for you. Karen is asking, uh, what's my favourite part of being captain, CEO of Airlines Live? Well, I love giving people pay rises. Martin's not too keen on me. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah cause you don't give me one. No, no, no. no. no that's because you're the real CEO. I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, a, I'm just a speaking monkey, that's it. Uh, favourite part of being captain? I don't know. The views are good. Working with, you know, you work with great crew. They're always good. Um, yeah, the, the, the lots of good things is where you have to sort out other people's jobs for them, long hours, minimum rest. Um, but yeah, it's 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 got its perks. The views are pretty good. I wonder if that second person in the pushback truck there is getting a bit of training, Mark. Because uh, yes. there's two people in there. That'd yeah, be I would cool. have thought that's quite possible. Yeah, that's one of the new pushback trucks. It's um, they're getting these new posh ones where instead of having a tow bar, it actually goes up. It, it, it's it's an amazing bit of kit. It's got these great big ramps on it. it. It goes up, it connects to the front wheels, and it actually lifts the aircraft, lifts the front wheel up. And they'll call you up and say, you know, um, tug connected, clear to lift. Yeah, par brake set, clear to lift. And you can see it on the artificial rise, you can see the nose of the aircraft actually go up by a couple of degrees as yeah. it lifts it off the ground. Wow. And, you know, you think there's a fair bit of weight, in, you know, on those aircraft, and that thing can lift it. Amazing, isn't it? You must what? have a lot of torque as well to get yeah. those aircraft moving, but... Lined up on the runway for Orlando, we've also got the Virgin Atlantic A330 just about to start its flight, 6,800 miles. And uh, that will be starting its roll very, very shortly. We've also got the uh, Singapore A350 on the taxi out as well. But I hope you're enjoying this Super Sunday show, guys. We're trying to make live, av we're really trying to take live aviation to the next level here on Airliners Live by bringing you all different views around the airport, the flight radar integration, multiple camera Camera's views. just got incredibly warm. Yeah, it's, it might just be you zoomed in and it might be the uh, ground just throwing it off a bit. Matt. We can't force it, but most of the time we don't need to. But yeah, another absolutely mega, mega shot. And uh, we also had Ethan after Simple Life's huge membership support returning for 10 months, a crew seat member. Thank you so much, Ethan. Huge member there. And Tom and Ann gifting five memberships. 89 brand new VIPs. A huge thank you, Tom and Ann. Thank you, Tom and Ann. Look forward to seeing you after if, if you are here. There you go, Virgin Atlantic A330 on the roll. Do you see them aforementioned ribbons on the wingtips there just peeking through? Yeah, 330s are known for it, aren't it? Yeah. Butter machine and the ribbon machine. That and the... I've noticed the 757 produces a lot of uh, ribbons as well. Oh, look at that. What a shot. What a shot. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, just seeing that. Yeah, Darren's asking, uh, when planes are being pushed back, why do some planes get lifted and why will some get towed? The newer, the newer trucks are the lift-up ones, and the older way of doing it was you'd have a truck and a tow bar and you'd connect the bar up. And uh, it's just the more modern trucks have the, have the lifting. They want to go down that route because you need left people operate it, so it costs them. It costs the ground handles are left. They do it in Amsterdam, one person does it all. And what about those... Uh Sort of robot tugs that they've got going on now. Yeah. That Heathrow they were operating them, weren't they? Or testing them? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, our, our lot were testing and they connect onto one of the main wheels. And, and uh, then isn't uh, it driven uh, from like a unit or yeah, something? Yeah, you've got a remote control, you know, like a PlayStation controller to, <laughs> to control this <laughs> no, thing. I'd have a go. Yeah. 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 You'd, you'd, you'd do a fez and put it in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> could sit in the tower and just do them all together. Yeah. Like, I'm blaming Dad, saying we're tugging the aircraft the runway, not save fuel and money. Yeah, um, Virgin trialled it at Gatwick years ago where they'd actually tow the aircraft up to near the runway. Wow. And then start it up. But I, I don't think it, you've got to be a bit careful. It's the same with single-engine taxi. A lot, of, you know, a lot of airlines will 
taxi out or taxi in on one engine. But with the Neos, you've got to have at least three minutes warm-up time. And if you suddenly, you know, I had it at Gatwick years ago, we, we were getting near the runway. And I'm looking at it, and I'd, I'd been at Gatwick before, you know, with my last day, and I knew, I could see what's coming. I said to the captain, I said, we really need to get that other engine going. Are you sure? There's loads in front of us. I said, no, I think uh, I can see how he's working this. I think we need to get it going. All right, then, so we got the engine going. Yeah, line up and take off straight, you know, almost straight away. So It's even with yeah. the IAEs as well. The yeah. second engine on that just takes a long time. Is it something to do with the EGT? Um, um, with the Neo, it mo if it's warm, it motors. Yeah. Um, it'll motor for a, about a minute or so before <coughs> it puts the fuel in, and it just it thermal it, it just um, equalizes the the heat through the engine, cools down the bits that are a bit too hot, and because you you don't want the the you know the shafts warping or bending. There we go, A350 on the takeoff. Let's turn the audio up for this chap, and then we'll get to Stevens' message. An ex Manchester tug driver. Beautiful. A350 departure from Singapore. And uh, Stephen says uh, it does take a surprising amount of skill um, to position the aircraft correctly. Uh, some Chinese just can't get their head around which way to turn the wheel. Yeah, I'm not surprised, Stephen, because um, it's kind of it's like backwards, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind like, of it's like reversing like, an articulated truck, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Like yeah, a, like a trailer or something. That's it. That's it. Yeah. No, I, honestly, not only would that take skill, but you've got to be consistent, right? Because you're just pushing yeah. planes back all day, right? So, and they've always got to be bob on. And simple life. Wow, with a ten dollar donation as well after the huge membership drop. Thank you so much, Shane. I panic sold my Greg shares last week after the stream. Someone put in the chat that Matt was going on the diet. <laughs> Thank you so much, mate. Cheers for the support. And Paul with the uh, returning membership as well. Thank you very much, Paul. But uh, ladies and gents, eyes to the skies. Matt Cam's picked it up. Emirates A380 is on the approach behind a uh, Jet 2 A321. And uh, this has been in the air now for 7 hours 17 minutes. Yeah, it's waiting for that Jet 2 to shift off the runway. Plenty of space between them, though. And your next arrival, King of the Skies. And uh, we'll all have our eyes on the flight deck, won't we? <laughs> How high is that thing? Where's tape measure? <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's stick with this. Let's keep not to zoom in, Andy. I want to see if this whips them clouds around like it did uh, on the other stream. Oh, yeah, last, last Sunday, yeah, when the 3.30... So you can see the clouds below just parting out of the way there. Yeah, it's trippy. And right behind. Wow, look at that. And you can see the spiral behind that aircraft. Absolutely beautiful. There is another cloud to potentially pass in front of it as well. So we're going to stick with this because it's uh, not something we see too often at Manchester, but it's really nice if you get it just right. It does it. You'll get to see the vortices, you know, where the, like I was saying, the high spreads to the low, and you get the spirals coming off the end. It should show up really well. We hope. Darren Caps asking, when's my next flight? This afternoon. I'm off to Keflavik, my favourite airport. Well, Newcastle, because I live about five minutes from it. <laughs> 20 minutes, whatever. Wow, well, yeah, you see the clouds getting whooshed around there by the quad jet. Another plane in the background there as well, just on the downwind leg of the approach. Looks like the king is clear of the clouds now, though. That was really cool. Yeah, really nice to see. They actually sometimes, if they go right through, you can, they create like a heart shape, don't they? That's right. Like That's what really I was kind nice, of hoping for. Nice, pretty heart. And the aircraft flying behind it is a uh, Ryanair in from Porto. That's just joined the ILS behind the 380. What you saw in the background of Andy's shot there. Mr. Jazz with a tier one on Twitch. Thank you, mate. 91 VIPs on Twitch. Now, can we hit 100 Twitch crew before the end of the stream? I'm sure we can. 
3.3 thousand watching on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that like button, folks, if you are watching on YouTube. Helps us out massively as the rain picks up here at Manchester. This should create a fair bit of spray on the A380s are landing. Splash down. Of spray now for Charlie on the taxi out 757 folks stick with the channel tons of aviation action still to come here on airliners live on your super Sunday show see the high nan a330 on the taxi out as well heading to Beijing if you're enjoying the stream smash that like button for us guys we love our super Sunday shows allegedly we're gonna get another um, Chinese operator at Manchester soon as well coming months like June I think and um, June will be the time for June Yao, which is a new uh, operator that we'll be seeing at Manchester. Um, we were hoping to see them last year operating the Dreamliners to, I think, Shanghai. Um, um, this time around, we should see them. More, more likely, should we say. I'm just going to break away from the shot of the 380 just to show you guys. Number one, tracked worldwide on Flight Radar 24. Yes. Is our Manchester Emirates A380. Well done, chat. Yeah, we're always manipulating flight radar. <laughs> there it is, guys. Number one tracked worldwide for the Super Sunday show here at Airliners Live, the Emirates A380. That's the power of the Airliners Live community, folks. Thank you so much for getting us to number one again on flight radar. Fantastic. Got a good question here from Craig Derbyshire. Um, what's the worst airport for ground navigation, bad lights, taxi signs, or long taxi? Um, you'd be surprised how badly labelled airports are with taxiways. It's not very clear, and especially in Manchester, when you're pulling on a certain stands, if it's raining, you can't see the, the lead-in line. It's, um, Newcastle had it as well. There's a lot of airports. The, the ground markings are, are, are very poor. Istanbul, I'm told, has got an amazingly long um, taxi. Uh, Barcelona's got a long taxi. Paris is a nightmare. There's so many taxiways. It's just a right pain in the backside to taxi around. So, yeah, that's... Uh, but, yeah, they're all... Uh, <sighs> yeah, when you look at your charts... This is why we like the 380s and the 350s, because you can zoom right in on the main screen rather than having to use an iPad to try and work out where you are. And the actual... It shows you where you are because it's got GPS. So it makes your taxiing a lot easier. Just looking at the flight deck though on that 838, it does look pretty high. Yeah, like I wouldn't say it looks. Just I know that's the thing. I'm I'm baffed. I'm not sure if that information is correct. You know. Yeah. Uh, Mervin missed your message earlier on. Thank you very much for tuning in from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome in. 2221 currently. Yeah, David, the uh, outboard engines do go into idle. The inners have reverses. They don't have reverses on the outer, outer engines. Uh, they don't need them. Plus, they're quite a way out, so uh, you don't want to be sucking up loads of uh, stuff off the uh, near the runway. So they don't have the reverses on the inboard engines. And I gather they swap the engines round from time to time. Because um, you're using reverse thrust, especially if you use full reverse, it's quite... It's like a full cycle on an engine, I think. So mm -hmm. they, what they do, they'll they'll have them on the inner, and then they'll put them on the outer for a bit to give them a break and put the outers on the inners. Oh, wow. Right now, Max. Just arriving in as well. Touchdown from Porto. And the Turkish 8021 Neil is also pinging up as well. 7-5 about to take off as well. There is. 
That's behind the uh, Air Lingus A330. It's uh, it's all going off here at the moment, chat. I'm getting asked what's the favourite rear port for takeoffs. A short runway? No, I like long, long, long runways. The longer the better. The most useless, useless things in aviation are air in the fuel tanks, runway behind you, and four seconds ago. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. yeah I like. I don't like short runways at all. Hannah Stafford, a very happy birthday to you. Hope you have a great day. What's the shortest runway that you normally frequent? Uh, yeah, Isle of Isle Man, I think it is. Isle of Man is it's a toss up between the Isle of Man and Jersey. Yeah, so looking at this 380, I, there's not only three feet in that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say there's three feet in that. Not at all. I think we need to uh, fact check that on Google. <laughs> but, uh, I'll pop out later and take measure for you. <laughs> Three feet in what, says Christina. Me and John were curious about how high the A380 cockpit was off the ground. And some information on Google said it was only three feet above an A320 cockpit. Now, I found that really hard to believe, so I wanted to have a look at it today for myself and try and gauge it, and I don't think that's correct. I don't think that's correct. Anybody in the chat know for sure? Let us know. Mm. I mean, you looked at a few different sources, didn't you? A few different ways of... Yeah, it wasn't just one place I looked. There's a few people saying it. But I don't know. Just got such a huge nose cone as well, and mm -hmm. you know, above that bigger nose cone. I would say the uh, the landing gear legs are a bit longer on the 380 then than a A320. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Some wheels are bigger. And when, when you see crew underneath, you know, doing inspections mm -hmm. and stuff, it does look pretty pretty big under there. Mm -hmm. Just... We all go pro white for us, our kid. Okay. A lot of planes down at the uh, start. There is. Runway. Yeah, loads of. Uh, Loads of aircraft waiting to go. As you can see, there's a bit of a queue on the taxi out. First lining up uh, is the uh, Madrid-bound Iberia Express, followed out by the uh, Finna that we saw push back on Matcam. Lufthansa A319, way back out to Munich. Beijing-bound Hainan A330, Jet 2 out to Tenerife, 757, and the Ryanair that... Uh, just arrived in from Porto, so uh, lots going on down that end of the runway. And as you can see, the Emirates A380 just pulling on to stand 12 with a digital guidance. Huge. Uh, that's weird, Paul. I'm not sure how that may be the case, mate. Looks a bit ghosty on YouTube today. Ghosty. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing that my end, mate. Sounds spooky. Make sure you've not got your um, eye comfort shield on on your phone or whatever they call it, because uh, I had that on and it does take a lot of the saturation out of the streams. I've just looked it up. Shortest runway I land on is uh, Jersey. Um, landing distance available 1556. Oh. And the Isle of Man, the shortest one there is 1583, I think it is. So, yeah, too short. <laughs> Crazy. 4,000 metres, please. The jersey's just... I mean, there's a lot of props there, isn't there? A lot of ATRs. Yeah, yeah and that's the thing with the Isle of Man in Jersey. You know, it's fine for turbo props. I don't need as much runway, but putting jets in... And makes an interesting day out, especially yeah. if the runway's wet. It's your landing performance. You need a longer distance. And uh, Ant saying, I've just introduced my 82-year-old 82 82 dad to Airliners Live. He's loving it. Yes. Um, can we get a shout out to Tommy uh, in Newcastle, please? Thank Yay. you very much, Ant. <laughs> Welcome in, guys. Well, sure, was there. <laughs> yeah. Paul's asking, Paul's asking, has my plane ever been hit by lightning? No, it hasn't, but uh, we said in the Fear of Flying videos, uh, on average, aircraft get hit about once a year. It's normally a non event. And apparently, SPD travels were confirming the uh, China cargo flight. Yeah, uh, it's loaded into the system as well, which is uh, which is good info. And also, uh, did I read that we might be seeing Air Canada doing a flight from something really strange, Manchester to Cancun or something bizarre, like with a, a, a freighter? 
Okay, I've not heard that one. Yeah, have a look at uh, another SPD Travels share, actually. Yeah, make sure you're following SPD Travels on Twitter, guys. Awesome Manchester information uh, page on Twitter. Always uh, keeping us up to date. Tiger's eyes asking, if the uh, A380 and inboard engines needed to be shut down in flight, how does the aircraft slow down without the outboard engine reversers? Um, well, you normally, you, you wouldn't lose two. Um, but you don't, with things with, air, with reversers, on a normal day, say at Manchester, you're coming in, you know, say you're coming in the 320, you use idle reverse. And it doesn't actually decrease your landing distance, it reduces the wear on the brakes. So instead of using a certain amount of brake wear, pressure, whatever, that's offset slightly by the reverses. Now, when you come to a short runway and it's wet or whatever, then you will use full reverse, and that will shorten your landing distance. But um, as we did in the um, pilot in-cap video that's on the Airliners Lounge that's uh, doing very well at the moment, the, air, the, the, the three passengers who landed the planes never used reverse. I didn't get them to use reverse because it would be too compli complicated to explain. We were coming into Manchester, and a 320 landed at Manchester with auto brake low won't need reverse. You've got a long enough runway. And I used medium just to get them stopped quicker because it's an automatic landing. Um, 380 is the same. You know, you've got when if you've got a long enough runway, you won't need you won't need reverse. You can do without it. Um, and now the newer newer kit you get, it actually tells you if you disconnect the auto brakes as well. It's quite annoying. You're on the takeoff roll and you, you, know, you sort of give the pedals a squeeze to disconnect. Oh, the brake disarmed! It yeah, shouts at you like, oh, that, shut yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question actually from earlier. Did you see the one about um, landings and crosswinds always look interesting, uh, but how do crosswinds affect takeoff? Asking Andrew Stothard. Um, now, in the latest flight lines uh, bit in the newsletter, I did crosswinds, but I did crosswind landings. Um, with crosswind takeoffs, again, you've got the same wind limits for your first officer if your airline has first officer limits um, for takeoff as you would for landing. On a Boeing, you'd want to turn the control column so that it's into wind. You've got the ailerons into wind so that that wing doesn't get picked up. The Airbus say you don't need that. The only problem is if you turn it you know, too much, then the spoilers come up and you get more drag. Uh, you need a lot of rudder. You put a. You, the, You'll use your tiller. You've got like a little steering wheel to turn the aircraft on the ground. When you line up on the runway, you use the rudder pedals. And the aircraft, initially, it's, it's on the Airbus, it's starting to steer the nose wheel. And then it blends out and the rudder becomes more effective at around about 108 knots. And that blends in. And you don't feel that happening. But you've got a great big boot of rudder to keep you straight. And then as you, as you take off, the, the wind will hit the rudder. And the aircraft, once it's airborne, hasn't got the friction of the wheels. It will weathercock. It will turn into, into winds. Um, so it's not a big deal. Where it might be a um, problem is if you have an engine failure on the wrong engine and, you know, you've got a strong crosswind, you're trying to keep it straight with one engine producing thrust, one not. It, you know, it, it's, 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 you know it's, not, it's not a difficult thing. Landings are more difficult in a crosswind, a lot more difficult. Yep. Um, Richard P, thanks for the info, mate, saying apparently the A380 is approximately 24 feet off the runway uh, cockpit window heights, whereas the A320 is 14 feet when loaded. That That's a bit like more it. like it, isn't it? That sounds more like it. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that's a lot more like it, Richard. Thank you very much for the info, mate. So when, you're out, when you are in the fly-by-wire sim, are you going to expect it to be a lot higher than you, you've seen? Uh, well, yeah, you should feel like you're higher up in... in the world basically because that's that's one of the things that I've, i struggle with, with in the flight sim is when you're in big planes you never feel like you're in a big plane and i don't know what it yeah. is about it i don't know whether it's i don't know there's something that throws me off and i don't know what it is i don't know if it doesn't feel high enough off the ground or or what they kind of need to get the the response of it as well you know like it's a bit slower to respond i'd assume and well apparently heavy. the 380 handles a lot like a 320 according to some people right okay but um i think it's uh yeah just because the size of the wings and stuff yeah yeah it makes it very maneuverable but wow and this isn't just by the fly by wire by the way this is i'm talking like the dreamliner when i fly that mm. the 747 when you fly that you just don't feel like you're in a big plane and i really hope the to get that right on the fly-by-wire, I must admit. That's a question from Boschini asking, um, 
going to Tenerife in June and the Seaton's 3-3. It's a Jet 2 flight. Anyone know the aircraft? Um, all the Jet 2 aircraft apart from the 330 are 3-3, so yeah, um, don't know. <laughs> yeah, the number of rows will dictate that. So yeah. 42 rows is a 757. Uh, 39 or 40 is a 321. And is it 37 on a 737? Ballpark figure. Oh, that, that rough guide should help you out. You let me know how many rows there are, I'll tell you what plane it is. Uh, Paul's asking if I've ever landed, landed any Irish airports. Yeah, I've been into Dublin, um, do Belfast. Used to do Belfast a lot, always like Belfast. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice, easy airport, it's a nice long runway. Everyone's friendly there, it's great. Yeah. That the international one? Yeah, all the growth. Uh, we have started doing um, City, but because uh, it's a short run, I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> it's pretty small, that, that would win. It used to be uh, very busy with Flybee, that. Yeah. And Jeff Walker, thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. So, and you all have very pleasant voices, apparently. Mm. Oh, there you oh. go. Take that. Put that on my CV. Thank you very much. Great to have you with us all in the stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. There's a high-down 3.30. Let's have a listen. Pretty nuts. Rolls Royce screamers on the high nine A330. Yeah, Mike come following that out right into the clouds for us. As we just lose it there. If you are enjoying the stream, guys, don't forget to click that like button. If you're watching on Twitch, check those Twitch Primes. You may have a free sub to the channel. If we can get to 100 subs on today's stream, that would be great. I think we're only nine away on Twitch. And thanks to everybody for supporting the channel on the YouTube stream, putting us to 89 brand new VIPs, only 11 brand new subs away from the big 100. And as you can see, the Emirates A380 is uh, well into getting loaded up now. Or uh, offloaded, I'm not sure which one. Yeah, we're offloading at the moment. Ken's asking if the wipers any good on a rainy day. Uh, not really. <laughs> they've, got, they've got a low and a high setting and neither of them are particularly good. I think they're, they're more noisy than yeah. wipers. Yeah. Yeah, they are noisy. Um, and I've, I've heard, I don't know if this is true, that you've got to be careful you don't accidentally knock them on on a dry day because yeah, you can't you scratch the head yeah, out of the damage the windscreen. windscreen. Yeah, yeah, you've got to make sure you only use them when it's wet. You've got this rain repellent as well. It's, it's highly toxic. And you give it a button, you give it a push, and it sprays up on the windscreen. But, uh, yeah, it's good. 7-5 on the roll. I'm wearing, I see you're wearing a tyres out habit. Uh, no, it's actually because I'm going to work after this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bob, thank you very much. Gifting a membership, putting us only 10 subs away from uh, 100 VIPs on your Super Sunday show. Wow. Thank you very much, Bob. 90 brand new VIPs on the stream. And Matt tracking out that 7574 has shifted over to a different angle for us. As the pushback slow down a bit on the apron, as Annika returns for 19 months, saying, uh, "Captain Mark, we're booking Benidorm for September. Any chance you'll be free to be one of our pilots?" Uh, I don't know. Someone's asking they're going to Cos. Am I going to be flying them? I don't know. You get your roster on the 17th. 
of each month and uh, in the summer you get lots of changes so I don't know be nice if I am if I am let us know you're on board and then when we're on the ground you can come see us you've had some uh, airliners live viewers on, yes. on your flights haven't you yes we had lovely Rebecca come on board and we've had uh, actually on our first family holiday one the uh, VIPs was on <laughs> and then we had a few on board before. I'll be honest I'm not too sure if I would choose to speak up if I knew Captain Mark was in the front <laughs> yeah. I think there'd be a few jokes being played oh yeah maybe uh, yeah maybe you get handcuffed to the seat something yeah. like that <laughs> I remember years ago it took me uh, I was telling a lad the other day that me, me oldest was down in Tenerife and I took a boyfriend out in Newcastle down to Tenerife and he's six foot six and he was chatting to these lads that you know on the flight and did me PA and said you know Bailey's on board and he's three today so happy birthday from us and these lads are like looking at him <laughs> looking him up and down like you're Bailey aren't you hi <laughs> You're not free though, are you? No, I'm clearly not. I'm not. You know, I'm six foot six. Clearly, I'm not free. Like, <laughs> Why do you say that? Oh, it's my girlfriend, stepdad. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> if I, if any of the um, any of the first officers are on, and I know they're on, then you know, well, such and such is on board, and I'm told when he grows up, he wants to be a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful shot on Matt's camera, Jodrell Bank. Observatory just uh, on the south side of the airfield. I was asking, am I flying on the 31st of this month? Uh, no, I'm not. Actually, got one of those rare days off. Oh. <laughs> Kevin's worried because he's got three flights that I might be doing this year. Well, I hope it is. He can come and see us. We could share dad jokes. <laughs> we have got a busy week next week, actually, on the channel. We've got, uh, obviously, the... Uh, have we? Inaug yeah, i got the... Not this week coming, but week after, obviously, the Jet 2 inaugural flight. We may be down at, Jet at Liverpool Airport for that one. <laughs> Martin's birthday as well. Oh. Is that on my birthday? I think it's the day after, I think. Ah, right. Yeah. Well, you, you may be alone then. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I'm, I may be in a hot tub somewhere. We, we will see. And then I know, Matt, you may have a special guest on that, that particular, not this Friday, the Friday after, right? Is he? Matthew! He's in Greg's. He's in Greg's. <laughs> You'll hear him in a minute go, where? Can I have one all, please? <laughs> quick, quick, quick. They're asking me questions. Oh, he's, oh it's, uh, it's my fault. We've lost. Should we ring him? No, it's should, should we ring him live on mm -hmm. stream? Yeah. Here we go. Special guest. Okay. Paul's yeah. asking if I've flown 3.30. No, I haven't. <laughs> I would like to. Hello. Would be nice, that one. Hello. 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 Right, Matthew. Uh, we've got oh, yeah. 30 seconds. It's for £25,000. What? That's the question. What did you get from Greg's on Tuesday, the 12th of March? <laughs> um, get your receipts up. Steak, sausage roll. Take your final answer. Wow, thank you very much, Colin, yeah. for returning for seven months of membership. Saying thanks, guys, for the great stream, as always. And... Andrew Sherwood smashing us through the 100 gifted yeah. memberships on today's show with the 10 gifted memberships. Let's get some love in the chat for Andrew throwing in the huge amount of support into the channel. Thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate that. Yeah, so um, my birthday is still very much undecided. We've got a lot, a lot of uh, family stuff going on at the moment, which is kind of uh, in limbo. So we will see. We will yeah. see. Uh, Sasha McCarthy with the very generous ten pound donation. Thank you so much. I'm loving the show today. Uh, I'm glad to be back. I feel bad missing so many shows. No worries, Sasha. It's great to have you back with us today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you, Sasha. Hope you're well. I blame and, uh, me dad's asking, um, is there a mandatory time? Um, you've got to turn up before a flight to repair. To repair. And yes, there is. You, you check in an hour before the flight departs. I always get there a bit early. Um, just so I can make sure everything's done. I can do it all in my slow time and uh, you know make sure everything's right. And, uh, yeah, I've just had a message from one of the DHL lads, actually. Uh, Andy Sage, one of the managers. Um, very, very good lad. The DHL guys are absolutely first class. And his dad's a big fan of the stream as well. He always watches. Hey, awesome. Nice. Nice. That EasyJet arrived in from uh, Geneva and just departing out EasyJet out to uh, Paris. So if the plane's sort of cold and dark, you're getting there, early doors, 
let's say your flight is at, I don't know, half six. What time would you be getting to the gate? Like, would you be getting there? Well, your, your check-ins are now, so, say the plane takes off at half six, you'd have to get there at, um, your report at the end of the security queue is at half five. Wow, okay. um, But what I'd do, I'd try and get there a little bit early, because you've got, I mean, you can't see it, I can't show you, but there's all this stuff, Martin can see it, there's pages and pages and pages of stuff you've got to read through. Um, weather charts, weather reports, notices about you know, certain, oh, well, Edinburgh, what's all those amendment to obstacle clearance heights and still plates on taxiway B and Eglister has got this and in case, oh, temporary case of eruption in Ireland, Eglister Deer will be defined as a level three airport. You've got all these notices to read, so you've got to sit there and get through all of that. And, and um, would you sit there by yourself, or have you got like the, the FO with you? And you depends kind of... if it turns what time they get there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I like to get, especially on a cold winter's morning. If, I, if I'm on early, I try not to do them, but I'll, I'll turn up early. I get the APU running, get the plane warmed up for when the cabin crew get there. Yeah, because it's not much fun, you know. You, you know, it's snow outside, and you're going to a completely cold aircraft, and you've got to start searching it and doing all your checks. It's, you know, if you get there five, ten minutes early, twenty minutes early, get get the APU running, get the heating on. And warm not, it up a little bit. They're not exactly wrapped up warm, are they? They might, might have a jacket no. on. But. No. Simple Life says, uh, good night all. Got to go and get my stuff ready for work. A massive thanks, mate, for all your support today. Uh, can we get some hearts in the chat? Simple Life uh, dropping huge amount of membership support today. Thank you very much, mate. And have a great night. And I'm sure we'll see you on uh, the next stream. So the question was from Matt. Are you still there? Yes. Um, have you announced uh, the special guest you may be having uh, next week? I have been in one or two hints. Yeah, we do have the uh, legend that is Arek from Mac Aviation. He's joining me on a, a show in the last weekend of this month. Where, if anyone's interested in that, make sure you're involved. Keep your notifications on, and uh, you shouldn't miss a bit of that. Yeah, that'll be an awesome show. We've had Arek on before, and he's an absolute legend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice guy. Watching his show the other day, actually. Yep. Good stuff. Definitely try and tune in for that one. Yeah, your shows have really been doing well as well, Matt. You haven't made the uh, the Friday shows. Yeah, they've had a they've had a decent reception. Everyone seems to be playing them, and uh, like I say, the traffic seems to be a, uh, seems to be a good flow of traffic during those Friday shows. So keep everyone entertained. Um, I'm still admitting that, mate. So yeah, everything's good. All good. Nice. Yeah, it's a decent day Friday for Manchester traffic. I've noticed. Some days can be a bit hit and miss, you know. We've dabbled with like Thursdays, yeah. Tuesdays, and stuff. And, yeah, you know, I think I think Wednesdays, Fridays, Sundays, really good days. Yeah. Romeo Zulu on the red this easy jet in from Copenhagen. Yeah, talking about it, you remember that day when uh, Storm Agnes hit, and you guys were filming, and I was coming back from uh, Santorini. I had to stop in Venice for fuel. Yes, I remember. and you'd gone home, but all the you know all the all the fans had done a raid on Eric's because um, <laughs> he was streaming at night, and he got me, and we had the uh, Eurowings had come in, done a go around, and we were coming back in, and he, he was having his second go. We were following him. He had another go, went around, and went back to Dusseldorf, and thank God we got him first go. But Eric was filming it. Wow. Wow. But yeah, it was it was wow. rough. It was rough. Yes, it was really, wow. really bad. We had a few storms this this winter, haven't we? Yeah, a few nasty ones. Seven seven three. All of our equipment is linked in the description, my guy. Have a look. The maddest was, uh, I think it was March 2022, when we had Storm Eunice, maybe in Feb, and um, that was crazy because literally it got to the point where every plane was going around. <laughs> there was nothing landing. <laughs> yeah, I was flying that day. Um, yeah. I was in on Storm Dudley. Yep. And I, I, I have said I think that was probably the worst I had. It actually hurt me back. Wow. Um, we came around, captured the ILS about three and a half thousand feet. We had gust, and it actually threw me in my seat and hurt me back. Um, even one of the cabin crew come and shook me hand after that land. Again, thank God we got in first time. Eunice, we were coming back from Paris, and uh, it was pretty bad. But uh, I think it was probably the worst was Dudley, the next was Agnes, and then Eunice. Yep. No, no, we're not we're no strangers to, to windy days here at Manchester. <laughs> You're certainly getting your practice in with windy rivals, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, bored with it now. <laughs> there was a, me a memory came up on my Facebook from years and years ago when I was at Newcastle, and I sent it to the, the captain I was flying with, and it was like, it's, it's nice to fly 
lined up with the runway for a change. I'm <laughs> you know, sick of going sideways. I've spent the whole winter thinking I'm a flight engineer. It was. You were coming in sideways every single day. Yeah. I remember coming in once. It was horrendous. It was my go as well. And you were just coming in sideways. I'm just, you know, like a thousand feet. I'm, just, I'm bored with going sideways. I'm bored, <laughs> bored, 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 bored with this now. <laughs> That's Steph Nack just locking, uh, oh, locking <laughs> left all the time. Sick of it. <laughs> sick of it. Can Matt show us the new building on. Uh, oh, yeah. Potentially. Potentially. Talking about the new pier that uh, is under works at the moment. The next stage of Manchester yeah, Airport's development. Minutes, back over there. No worries. Cheers, Matt. Yeah, a lot of construction work going on at Manchester Airport in the next few years. I think that at the moment that's a major one. Another one that is going on closer to home here at the Runway Visitor Park is the Premier Terminals uh, reopening soon, which is the big white building you can see often uh, on the streams. Uh, and that is a semi private terminal building that essentially. Uh, what you can do, I don't know how many airports have this, maybe it's quite a common thing, similar to an airport lounge where you can pay an extra fee as any passenger uh, to any terminal, and you can just use this terminal instead of terminal 1, 2 or 3. So even even if you're flying on like a Ryanair flight to Dublin, you know, you can pay 100 odd quid and get to use this uh, sort of semi-private terminal, which I don't know a lot about it, but I assume it's going to have quite like a nice executive feel to it, more calm and I've heard you also get a private chauffeur out to the airplane as well regardless of what airline it is um, so if it does reopen I think we'll definitely have a look at it and see if it's uh, something that we can maybe do a little video of I'm sure a lot of you uh, including ourselves are really curious what it's like inside how it works you know what's the proposition all about and uh, I mean it, it, it's always visible on our streams isn't it so I think it uh, would be a due, dil due diligence to investigate what that's uh, all about so Rich, uh, question coming from Richard Smith asking where we park our cars yeah we've got staff car parks um, around the airport we park in what we call staff far east which is on the other side of the runway right. uh, near the it's touchdown zone. <laughs> um, there's one over here, I think it starts south. south, south yeah. 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 And you have to get a bus round to the terminal where, you you know, it's just, it just adds half an hour each way to your journey. So an hour a day is added to your journey just by getting a bus from a car park. I see them lucky so-and-so engineers who get to use that little uh, turnstile gate, you know, that's by the, the car yeah. park. You can just walk over. Yeah, we, um, we used to stop in... Um, the one next to the terminal, but uh, we've since COVID, we've been shifted over to Staff Far East. Apparently, you can park for a month there for what it would cost a week at the other one. Yikes. Right. Sonny gifting five airliners live memberships. So, thank oh, you wow. very much, Sonny. You're a moderator, Sonny. You don't hey. have to be gifting. <laughs> Wake up, Twitch group. Wake up, Twitch group. <laughs> hey, if Sonny's on your plane, though, you're, you're in uh, good hands if you are. The pilots. And uh, Matt. And Matt as well. And Henry. Yeah, yeah Henry. Yeah. Hey. If the pilots, yeah. for some reason, disappear. Yeah. Uh, Paul's asking what planes do I fly at the moment. Three, uh, A319s, 320s. Um, we can't say what airline, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, Manchester Airline. Used to fly 75s, used to fly 73s. Nice biz, Jet. That one arriving in from uh, Shannon. So just a short hop. Interesting to see that Chris from Flight Radar 24. He's a pilot himself, and he flew the uh, biz jets as well. I can't remember which ones. I think it was Honda biz jets he flew. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. I think. Could be wrong. Right now, just touching down from Prague. Susie G's asking, do you still get a buzz out of flying? Yes, yes, you do every day. It's great. Yes. Um, it's great. But like I said, it's all the other rubbish that you have to deal with that takes the shine off of it. <laughs> Once you're in the aircraft and you're on your way, it's fantastic. I think one thing that would be, I, I, I think would be satisfying is when you get like a nice sunrise or mm. a nice view out the flight deck windows. And yeah, I took some that. nice pictures the other day actually of, ten, of uh, 
10 hours of grief, 10 yeah. grief, and uh, some star shots, and yeah, you, you do get some fantastic views. Once, once, once you, you know, you, you're actually on your way, you're about to take off, that's when the fun starts, it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. But it's all the, all the rubbish before dealing with, you know, crewing issues, and you haven't got your flight plans, and this isn't right, and you can't, you know, it's a lightweight aircraft, you can't get the fuel in the bags and the passengers on, and all that you have to deal with drives you up the wall. Yeah. And, you know, it, just turning up and doing your job's great. Top air Porsche for Andrea on the pushback. <laughs> Aaron Capps asking, who's the most famous person you've had in your flight? Oh, uh, had Nicholas Brendan out of Buffy. Um, Raymond Van, Van Barneveld, the darts player. Um, yeah. Cheryl Baker out of Bucks Fizz. Who <laughs> 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 we're talking creme de la creme, here, you know. <laughs> 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 we're supposed to have the president of Sierra Leone once, but he went uh, up to London on, a, uh, on pri uh, Gaddafi's private jet. So we got all his food. It's that a bit was of nice. an upgrade, isn't it? He <laughs> rolls seven in easy jet, <laughs> and he takes a private jet. Yeah. That was down on my last airline. Uh, Jacob's asking, what's your opinion on visit the flight deck? Do you enjoy inviting people? Does it get annoying? No, we absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. It's, I always feel a bit awkward asking them, you know, because like, I, I know they're, they're sometimes a bit busy. Obviously, you always yeah. ask first. but yeah. Some 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 guys aren't up for it. Some are miserable. You're not having that. I don't but know. I think it's great. Especially if you've got a slot. You know, you've got a four-hour slot. Right. Kids come and see the flight deck. Yeah. Inevitably, all the parents are there as well. Oh, can we get a picture? You know? <laughs> Drunken stag parties, hen parties, you know. <laughs> I always, I'm always baffled how young pilots can be as well. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, there was a lad I was flying with the other day. He's four months younger than my stepdaughter. Wow. And uh, I'm sitting there like, oh, I feel old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my we, dad got a card for his birthday. And he said, you know you're old when you start to see your toys on Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have a good birthday, though? That's the important one. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was good. Seb's asking, have you ever got cramp when on final approach? No, um, I'm, I'm quite careful. I always make sure I uh, have a good wiggle of my legs, put the seat back, and give him a good wiggle. Feet warmers? No. no, we haven't got those. <laughs> that costs money. Yeah, me. Certain airlines have, but no, we don't. Yeah. We don't have such luxuries. Just wear your fluffy socks. Yeah. <laughs> My airline has live socks. Yeah. Or the, be the beanie as well. Well, yeah, wrap them around my feet. Hard <laughs> 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 work. Yeah. That beanie doesn't have to keep your head warm. Oh, it mate. stays in my uh, in work. Me, uh, me, me jacket, me, me. I'll be honest, I hardly wear my beanie because it's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even joking. I'm roasting up here. It's too hot for me. I just wear it when, it, when it's days like today where it's like quite, you know, rainy, intermittent and stuff. It's great because your head just stays dry as well because it's yeah. water, water resistant. I think I'm more of a cap kind of guy. I like how me and Mark have both got both variants on them. Yeah, well, I was going to wear me goldy one. Um, but who so has it? If I bash your head hard enough, it goes gold. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting told off by the fans because I've still got my tag on, me, uh, me label on the on the gold one. Is that just uh, holding the value, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's got it on eBay. I'm going to get a Three refund, times mate. The I'm price. Gonna get a refund, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got 14 days later. Is <laughs> <laughs> it 14 days after the task for? <laughs> 30 days for most people, 40 days for you. When I popped up to see Matt the other day, you know, all the chat was like, he's still got the tag on his hat. I was doing the Billy P, but I was like, Wee! <laughs> he's still got his tag on his hat so we call free engagement in the business <laughs> that aircraft on the way out to Belfast yeah, British designated. They use the uh, the British aircraft that based at Belfast, and then it's the Irish ones based at uh, Dublin. Definitely some uh, legal technicality there that they've got to follow. Can see another plane on a uh, final approach as well. At least I did. Yeah, I can see it. So. Ah, oh, Liam Fox. The first officer on this flight is a, is a smashing lady. He's a Welsh lad called Kellen. Yep. And I don't know if you've ever seen the film Twin Town with Reese Evans and his brother in it. 
Nope. Brilliant, brilliant film, absolute legend film. But he, his impressions of everyone on that are absolutely first class. He's really, really good lad. I saw him the other day, he's a smashing lad. I'll be gutted when he goes off to be a captain. Is he uh, aspiring to that, do you know? Is oh, yeah, they all are. They yeah? all are, yeah. Yeah, he'll be a good captain as well. He's a smashing kid. Got the chocolates on board as well. It's a Neo. Neo, is it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, on the way in from Nice, left mm -hmm. just under two hours ago. Pretty much to the minute. Terry's asking, are there many female pilots or FOs waiting for you to come? Yeah, there's quite a few. There's, um, there's a couple just gone off to get their command, so we'll miss them. Um, but yeah, some, we've got some really, really good crew there. And Malky Sanya, yeah, Twin Town's an excellent film. Trouble is, most quotes have an expletive in them. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> 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 I'll blame your dad's off. Take care, mate. See you on the next one. Take it easy, mate. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. I'll have to get the bleeper out, won't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Actually, there's a, there's a quote where um, the dad, who's known as Fatty, Fatty forgot his hot dog, so obviously I've taken <laughs> the swear word out. So I might have to go and get me uh, hot dog after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you on there, zoomed in for a second, Andy. No worries. Europe Ooh. car special as well. Nice little special livery to see. Qatar 350's in its way in. Nice. Yeah, although, like, the, you know, it's not the best-looking livery. It is nice to see a bit of variety for the plane spotters. And obviously this is pretty, pretty much purely just a, a commercial. EasyJet did up until recently have all their Neo specials as well. I think they're all disappearing now if they haven't already all gone. Um, yeah, they're, getting, they're going off the older ones, but some of the new 321s have got them on. Oh, right. So, okay. um, I mean, yeah, they, um, I think Seb mentioned that, you know, they're looking a bit tight, you know, they're seven years old or whatever, the original, the early Neos. So, yeah. You know, they're getting repainted and that. And, uh, but, yeah, I've seen uh, one of the new Neos. They just had their 400th Airbus delivered as well. It's a Neo that's going off to the uh, 321 Neo that's going off to the continent. Um, wave, wave from the FO there as well and a little flash of the lights and the captain as well. There's Kellen. Bless him. <laughs> Good lad. Oh, Kevin's asking, do I have an Insta or an X page? No, I don't. I, you, I don't share me pictures. Of, I... you were, yeah, was it you yourself who was into, you were into photography a little bit, aren't you? I used to be, yeah. When yeah. I, yeah, I used to have a bit of time on my hands. I used to you know, do a bit of me and the wife, but uh, yeah. now I'm here all the time. That's my problem as well. I do love photography. I love getting out and editing pictures. It's so therapeutic and rewarding, but you just need the time, don't you? And to, to be a bit consistent with it. Yeah. I don't mind taking the camera to like a, maybe a new city that I've not visited or somewhere like York is really nice, like a nice photogenic city. Um, I don't find I know I know people are into street photography and like Manchester and places like that. I can't really see it; it's a bit too busy for me. Yeah, I did. I used to do, did a bit around Newcastle. I got one 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 a competition with one of me pictures of a guy playing a saxophone in the street. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, Newcastle's fairly safe though, so you, you're less likely to get your camera gear nicked. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Never been to Newcastle, you know. It's one of the places I've always wanted. It reminds me, I think it's probably the same era as Liverpool. You know, like, uh, when, when it was maybe sort of developed into, like, what it is now. Because it, it seems very similar, you know, like, uh, architecture-wise, sort of street layout-wise. And I love Liverpool. I think it's a 10 out of 10 city. I've only ever been to uh, Manchester City once, and that was when the wife and kids were down a while ago. Wow. And just went to the... Uh, the in the museum and came back. <laughs> yeah, but I, used to, I I lived in Manchester for three, four years, and I, I only ever went to the city centre two or three times <laughs> on my own accord, maybe twice to be honest. And Paul's asking, do I have a YouTube channel that you could subscribe to? Uh, mate, I'm just on Airlines Live. I did have a YouTube channel, but it wasn't aviation related, and <laughs> I don't put anything on there anymore because <laughs> I haven't got the time. But yeah, do you, you want to see me? Uh, Airlines Live, Airlines Lounge. Um, yeah, that's that, and simulate is, is where you'll see me. And if you're a VIP of the channel, you, you did a, a video the other day. You were mentioning uh, an explanation video of the dual pilot incapacitation video. Yeah, it was good. That. I enjoyed that. That's yeah, so on. for anyone who's been gifted memberships today, go and watch those VIP-only videos whilst your membership is uh, 
is on because um, we are putting a lot of effort into our behind the scenes videos for it's our loads. VIPs. Yeah, yeah, there's like one a week, isn't there, really? Yeah, so if you're a VIP of our channel, we're making a huge effort to make some extra content for you guys. So that's another great reason to sign up to support our channel. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving it. But like I say, for those who can't afford to sign up, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you get gifted a membership, make sure you go and watch those videos um, while you've uh, while you've got the chance to see them. Dan's asking about an Aer Lingus from Lanzarote to Dublin that had an emergency fuel diversion at Faro. Um, I've had a look on the Av Herald. I can't see anything on there about it, but that, that's where these sort of things normally um, normally appear on the Aviation Herald. It's a great website for uh, all incidents. Um, but yeah, have a look on there. And it may appear on there at some point. Is there a chance that could not be an emergency? That could be a... Uh Obviously, if it's like Squawk and 7700, then yeah. But yes. that, that, that can happen with just non-emergency procedures, right? With yeah, I mean, we, we sometimes... Out, what what tends to happen a lot is if you're on an air, on lands of Grotty, you've the runway's quite short. You've got a big lump of rock at the end of one end, and you've okay. got the sea on the other. And I gather that they're stopping people taking off on the wrong runway. So we, our airline tries to put Neos on because they've got a bit more room. Mm. But you struggle to get the passengers, the bags and the fuel on. And a lot of the time you'd want to take off on the wrong runway, take a slight tailwind, but you've got, you know, a clear climb out. And I've done it before where we couldn't get, we couldn't do it. So we had to divert into Faro to pick fuel up to get back. So that might what it, it would have been. It wouldn't be an emergency, yeah. but you'd be dropping into Faro to pick fuel up. Um, so you can continue your journey. That, that, that had much more time. That must have had a lot yeah, of time to the journey. Hour. Yeah, because yeah. the whole descent and yeah, you know. descent, climb out, and then you know you're looking. I mean, a splash and a dash, you can get it done in 20 minutes. Wow. Um, but um, our one, it took a bit longer. We had a issue with the fueling. As an av geek, I think I'd enjoy that, but I don't think anyone else on board yeah. would. <laughs> we had this on Agnes. You know, I had to do a PA to the passengers from the front, and say, look, you know, the, here's your choices as a storm. And uh, we either stop in Venice and pick up fuel or offload 30 people. And I decided, well, me and the company decided it'd be better to get everyone there. And they all cheered. Forget how nice this plane looks. <laughs> it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Really elegant. Big Red's asking, would I like to fly? I'd, I'd like to go in the sim, um, just to have a play with all the new toys. But <laughs> yeah, if it goes too far. <laughs> Which is asking, why does it? Some airports schedule planes to depart at the same time when they won't, you know, know they won't go at the same time. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. It's all down at the airport and the slots that they sell. A lot of factors, isn't there as well? Yeah. You know, not every plane is, you know, right next to each other. You know, here at Manchester, you've got quite a long taxi from Terminal Two. Yeah. Whereas if you're at Terminal Three and they're on two threes, then you can get out pretty quick sometimes if they're on two three right departures. Oh, there's an Egypt Air coming in. Oh, nice. Is that next? Is it all? Uh, it's no. No. Love to see that before we wrap. Yeah, it's, it's number two to land, so we definitely nice. will. Of course, they've placed a big order with uh, Airbus uh, recently. The A350-900s. I think they've ordered about 14 of them. Egypt Air, have they? Yes. Ooh. That's going to look really nice. Let's fly pigs. Was that the, I think it was the Dubai Air Show that was announced a couple of months ago. But yeah, that's going to look really, really nice. I mean, you know, there is a chance we might see some wide bodies with Egypt Air. I know they're pretty busy. They started with the 737-800, so now they've had to upgrade to the 321-NEOs. Probably because of uh, capacity. It might be availability of aircraft, but probably the capacity more than anything. But I think the next 
airframe they have up is an A330-300 series, which that is quite a big, big jump up in uh, size. Do you prefer the 900s or the 1000s? Definitely the 1000s for me. Yeah, mate. It's bigger the better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus the landing gear is nicer. It's not front wheel forward, so uh, you don't bang it in the runway. Yeah, good point. Just had a message from the FL on one of those flights um, saying that uh, the captain said he'll blow me kisses next time he comes off the runway. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'll wave me back end at him. That <laughs> <laughs> <a> proposition. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Love the winglet design. You can kind of tell they're getting a bit more efficient as well because you don't see as many ribbons. Yeah, he got a really nice wave from the Sun Express on that cam then. He, he opened the window and gave Matt a wave. Yeah, cool. Wow. Just caught that. Yo, nice. That's top. Sorry, Andy. That's all right. <laughs> no way. Is that our first ever Matt cam wave from the pilot up there then? Fantastic. Take it easy, Steve. Thanks so much for your Twitter posts as well. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, we are pretty uh, active on the old Twitters. Go give us a follow. At Airliners Live, one word. We recently hit 20,000 followers as well over there. Awesome. Pretty nice. We throw a bit of everything over there. News, video clips, photos, updates. It's great to have so many of you watching the stream as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Around 3,000 viewers for the full show so far. And uh, we did pass through 1,600 likes a minute ago as well. Wow. And next to land is Egypt 10. Let's go for it. And Andy 10, great to see you, mate. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers, Sonny. Thanks for clipping that. Yeah, cheers, Sonny. I've just sent it to them. <laughs> One of our favourite planes to see at Manchester, Egypt Air A321neo. Coming in from Cairo with an absolutely gorgeous paint scheme. Also featuring that uh, Airbus mask design up front that we only really see on the Airbus new airliners. Not something you ever see on Boeing, so I'm going to assume it's a uh, sort of patented uh, design feature. It does have a functional purpose, though, which helps dissipate the heat between the fuselage and the windows there as well. Kind of see it on a cars on the windscreen sometimes certainly set on the older aircraft to get a lot of delamination around the edges of the windows and the engineers draw on it with sharpies and right. date it yeah. and then they can watch the spread and when it gets to a certain level then the, the windscreen's replaced that's interesting I do wish more planes had these I know uh, Turkish Airlines the new additions to their fleet, the A321neo are getting these masks as well. Just a little touch that looks pretty smart. We've got the uh, emote in the chat as well of the, the triple <laughs> triple emote of the Airbus <laughs> mask design. <laughs> Loving it. And that's asking why do some planes get pushed back by barns, some get the lifty. It just depends on the tug that you've got. The newer ones, a lot of them are lifty up ones because it's cheaper and sometimes it only needs one crew to operate. So that's just down to availability then, is it? Yeah, I mean, they're quite expensive. You know, obviously the, a, a, a tug's expensive anyway. A, a, a tow bar's pricey, but it's not ridiculous. But when you start 
you know, you've got a tug that has to be able to lift up an entire front wheel, you know, front of an aircraft, you're talking big money. Mm. But the money that you save on not having, you know, you have one crew member to operate like in Amsterdam instead of a crew of three or four, it cuts down on the costs over, over you know, a period of time. And then, you know, obviously the ramp routes can then go off to another plane. They don't have to be stuck with that one pushing it back. You yeah. just need it. You know, Amsterdam's very clever because your ramp lads go off somewhere else and you've just got your, your, your tug driver. He's completely different. He's not one of the ramp crew at all. He's just, a, you know, he just goes, pushes the planes back. Right now, just touching down from Copenhagen next to land. The thing is, with all of these things, they're all to save money. No one is going to spend money to make my life or the ramp lad's life easier. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That costs money. That's not. You know, it's it's all to save money and it's make money for shareholders. Yeah. This is why you know people say, oh, you know, you, oh, it's easy job. You know, you sit there. The, the plane flies itself. No, well, no, it's not like that at all. The, Mr. Boeing and Mrs. Airbus spend an awful lot of money designing autopilots not to make my life easier but so that they can make more money. It burns less fuel, you can get more planes in the sky, you can have reduced separation up above 29,000 feet. Yeah. So that's why you have autopilots. You know, you can land in zero visibility with the land as a, you know, one of the, again, one of the flight lines that I did recently on the uh, newsletter talks about the autolands. No one's gonna spend that money to make my life easier. Bit of a queue down the uh, end of two, three. Ryanair, Icelander, another Ryanair, and another Ryanair, and another Ryanair, <laughs> Saxi and all that. Oh. Plenty of uh, aircraft. you got trade tables, though, in your plane. Yeah, we've got tables. They haven't. They haven't. <laughs> They've got tech log. Um, <laughs> Matt, I think your mic might be muted, but if you want to run us through that eight, that new building as well, that's the uh, that'll be good. Tour of Manchester. Yeah, there's a lot of work going on at Manchester, as we mentioned, and Terminal 2 is seeing a lot at the moment with the construction of what is the new pier. And that's the one that's going to be able to facilitate two A380s as well. So I am curious where that's going to happen, you know, if we can still see it on MacCam when that opens in the next year or so. You guys? Yeah. Hello. We got so the, uh, here's the start pulling. of the site there, uh, yep. Yeah. Qatar pulling in, but like, a few structures have been put in place now. I'm not sure what they're intended for, whether these are actual just jet bridges of sorts. I'm not sure, but there's a couple of structures have been put in place now as well. These white, big, big white framework. So whether these are staying in situ now, I'm not sure, but uh, certainly progression. Getting to work. Yeah, what's happening, mate? Someone, one of the lads I work with, the chemical crew, he was involved in the consultation for this expansion of the terminal. He said that they originally planned to have more piers. And that's one thing Manchester suffers, it struggles for parking, mm. the way it's designed. But apparently, for some reason, they've cut down the number of piers they're actually going to put, so we've got even less. So I don't know what the, what the logic is behind that. Have you ever had issues with... Uh finding a parking space, so to speak, at Manchester? The problem we've got is that with, with my airline, they want to put more planes in. They yep. want lots more planes in, but we can't park them anywhere. Right. They're very, very limited. They go up to, I think it's 23 in the win in the summer and 18 in the winter. It's not many, There's is it? Park no, it's not. <laughs> I mean, you know, you could, you could... I think ideally they'd like to put an awful lot more in. Yep. But uh, there's nowhere to park them. And they are what? talking about night stopping. Mm-hmm having more planes and then, you know, a certain amount are going to have to night stop in sort of Inverness or somewhere else, so they're not actually taking up a parking space. Oh, right, OK. Lee with a very difficult one, I think. What do you prefer, the Egypt Air or the new Royal Jordanian that we saw? <laughs> it's, Royal I think Jordanian. the Jordanian takes yeah. it for me. Yeah. Have you seen that yet? I was, yeah, I saw it uh, the other day. Um, uh, I mean, I, I used to, when I used to go spotting around Heathrow years ago, we used to see that on Tristunts. And uh, A three tens. Wow. I've got. I have to wow. dig me photos out. I've actually taken photos of those aircraft and on those aircraft. I mean, it hasn't changed in donkey's years that colour scheme. But on it, I can assure you, on a on a TriStar, it it uh, and an A three ten, it looked particularly saucy. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we've seen it for the first time. 
on Wednesday, and uh, mm. it was only A319. Man, I've never seen an A319 pop that much, you know. <laughs> It's yeah, low, it low so good, seat it? numbers, isn't it? It's like 120, I think, on the 319s they've got, so they can fly them further. Yeah. But not taken away from this Egypt air here on Matt Cameron. It does look yeah. incredible. It's pretty. How about you, Matt? What do you reckon? What's your choice? Oh, uh, that's a really tough one. That it is, isn't it? I like, I, oh, man, that's a tough one. Uh, I think the Jordanian just takes it to me. Just, yeah, I think we're just all by the sky. All in agreement there, yeah. aren't we? Hey, I wonder what an AC-21 Neo Jordania would look like. That'd look insane. Or, or what about a Dreamliner, eh? Hey? Well, I'm hey, hyped for the Dreamliner. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen them go over a few times. Yeah. yeah. There's a nice one there rolling, but I think we're going to stick chat with this taxi in the uh, Egypt air. Uh, make the most of this beautiful aircraft, because it looks like it's coming right into where Matt is. You know what, let me... Let me show you guys dead quickly. We can get away really quickly. Oh, the wind's calmed down a lot as well. It's pretty choppy this morning, but it's definitely settled. And here we go. Beautiful. This is the best stand for Matt Cam. Matt following in that Egypt set. I'm going to have to watch this. Wow, what a view. Just mad, that was just such a small, subtle touch, you know, like a simple paint scheme like that just looks so good. You know, with the Royal Jordanian, it's it's quite theatrical almost. There's a lot of paint being used, whereas this is it's quite minimal. Yeah. Elegant. I love how shiny the wings are as well. Oh, yeah. talk about the 310 the Jordanian 310s something that always stood out for me with that aircraft for all the 310s is when you look at see where how those wings attach to the body of that Egypt air yeah you can see it's got fairings around the wings where it meets the body you've got a wing box there yeah 310 didn't have that you had a round fuselage and you had the wings coming out the side there was no fairing around there and it would look really odd but um, yeah if you ever google it and have a look yeah you can see the fairings around the wing there 310 just had the wings coming out of the body. Mm. Yeah. Was that some sort of vector for the aerodynamics? Somewhere? Oh, what, the line? Something was sticking up. No, that's good. Zoom back in on that wing again, Matt, because I just wanted to show him. I probably won't send it to stream. I just want to show him that. Actually. Wow. Jordanian got the E2 as well. Yeah, that it looks, looks good, doesn't looks it? Looks naughty, yeah. I wonder if that would reach to a... Uh, Let's go right in, Matt, to the back left of that wing. Oh, it's the... Um, yeah. It's a bit of silver that it's a bit of um, protection for when the flaps move, so it doesn't scuff the paint. Oh, right, really? Yeah, because mm. yeah, the flaps run up and down Ooh. there. So. Cool. Like lad, I was telling yeah, we were just looking at the back back of the wing there, chat. What that was, that little little fleck of something along the back of the yeah, wing. It's just a bit of protection from the uh, from the flaps moving up and down. Oh, cool. They do they do you know they, they they do wobble about a little bit. They're on runners, but they do move slightly, especially if it's windy. Yeah, you don't want them sort of damaging the paint. No. Great, a free th uh, gosh, a three twenty Neil. We wish <laughs> on the uh, taxi out. So used to see them with three thirties. That's a problem. Freudian slip. Well, Roy's got a good question here. Um, without having visual on the nose or how difficult it is for the flight crew to follow the line so perfectly, um, it's it's quite easy um, because you can see the taxi lines ahead of you. You're up, you're up quite high. When you have to turn a corner, especially sharp corners, so, say you're coming off um, one of the, the taxiways on the Isle of Man, because it's a narrow taxiway, you have to overshoot it because the nose wheel is actually behind where I sit. Um, it was even worse on Concord because the, con the nose wheel was even further behind. So you have to actually overshoot it and then turn. Um, but again, it's it's just a practice thing. Um, but when you're just taxiing, you know, normal taxiways, they don't generally 
don't have particularly top sharp turns in, so you can you just you need you, you need you just need to overthink it, just overshoot it slightly. A three thirty push back on Matt Cam as well, Virgin Atlantic. Beyond the taxi out. I think we might make that our final departure for today. As uh, that's the only thing that's pinging up for us at the moment. Awesome. Mega, mega departure. A330. Virgin Atlantic. But a huge thank you to everyone tuning in on today's stream. And uh, to Captain Mark as well for joining us before Thanks, a everyone. long day in the skies. Coming yeah, up. thank you, Mark. It's been great. Get in there, Mark. <laughs> And uh, well done to Matty Boy Smith bringing us all the apron Legend. cams as well. It's been good to have that back this week. It feels like ages since we've done a Super Sunday show, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Really good today. And uh, obviously, Brownie up on the roof as well. Thank you. With the two main cams and uh, a couple of departures coming up before we finish as well. But as we say, today was our first day with the flight radar integration. So a huge thank you to Flight Radar 24 for becoming a, a uh, partner of Airliners Live. And uh, we really appreciate you guys uh, working with us and providing access to this awesome technology to integrate into the streams. Hope you guys have enjoyed it at home. I'm sure it's uh, added a little bit extra to the show today, I think. Mr. Jingle saying, can't wait to see the return of Mark at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah Chappie works at uh, DHL, I think. One of the DHL guys. Well, I'm in today. Yeah. On the calf, so... Come and see me. There's a bag of sweets in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ray's asking, how long does it take to shut the aircraft down before exiting? Um, surprisingly, not very long. No. Uh, you pull on the stand, shut the engine down. You've got the uh, APU running. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the passenger's getting off, you turn the ADRSs off, um, the, part of the nav kit. Turn the oxygen off for the pilots. And uh, once the ground power's on, you turn the APU off. If you've used the APU bleed to give air on the way in air conditioning, then it has a, a minute rundown to cool down, and then it'll shut down. Get that um, weather radar off as weather well. Weather radar's off on the taxi, and, yeah, you want to get that off as quick as possible because you don't want to irradiate the people. Yeah, and, I mean, what, uh, uh, a bit more off. for people who might not know. So in the nose of, let's say, the Airbus, um, but most aircraft, there's a weather radar. Um, but that's quite powerful, isn't it, yeah. the amount it emits? So yeah. you want to turn that off before you're pulling on to stand because you don't want that sort of radiating through uh, yeah. the ground crew and stuff like that. I mean... If that was to be forgotten, would it be quite obvious or not really? Uh, well, it's on your checklist. You know, it's where the radar's off. You know, you, you make sure. You know, it's, you make sure it's off. Um, I mean, it, yeah, chances are it's not going to do any harm. But I think it runs at like something like nine gigahertz, and it's a it's a funny frequency. It's it, it's designed to pick up um, water droplets in convective cloud, yeah. and it works. You know, generally, you know, very well. But yeah, you don't you don't want it on. You don't want to be irradiating people. But yeah, it is one of the checks you make sure off. And it says on your screen whether it's on and off. And as you're taxiing along, the high ground and buildings will show up and you'll see it straight away. It's on so you can get it off. Um, when you do a rejected takeoff, uh, you know, normally you do it every six months in the simulator. One of the things I do is once it's stopped, once the aircraft is stopped and it looks like, you know, there's a, a, a big problem, I will switch the weather radar off myself because when you talk on the second, second radio to the fire crews who come out to the aircraft... I like to tell them, you know, part brake is set, engine number one is running, engine number two is on fire, APU is running, weather radar's off, mm. I want a thermal check on the engine, a thermal check on the brakes, and then they'll come back and tell you. But if you can tell them the weather radar's off, you know, it's, it's a little bit less worrying. One of the things that you did in that dual pilot in-cap video, wasn't it? You got to turn off the weather radar. Obviously, we didn't keep that in yeah. for timing purposes, but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because again, you know, with that scenario, you would be stopped on the runway. You're not going to get them a taxi. Yep. Um, it, yeah, the, the tow truck is going to have to come out and tow them off the runway, and they'll connect the headset up that we talked about earlier. You saw the big orange leaf. The headset guy will come on. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, all right, all right. You know, turn the weather radar off and set, unset your part brake, and off we go, sort of thing. But it's, uh, yeah, you want to get it off. It's. Uh, from one Turkish operator to another, Sun Express, 737 MAX 8. Smooth rotation on 2-3 right. Oh, as Patricia, Patricia mentioned earlier the other day, she watched the Fear of Flying video. That's hit, I think, what is it, 1.3 million views at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it helped her a lot, and she said she's going to watch the other one. So, yeah, do watch the other one. It's good. It's got some, other, some new stuff in it. Yeah, for those who may not know, we did release episode 2 
of the Fears of Flying video is on the Airliners Lounge channel. So if you're not subscribed to our second channel, you might not even know about it. It's called Airliners Lounge. Make sure you head over, go and subscribe there, go and watch the videos because we put a lot of effort into them videos. And uh, there's some really good stuff on there. We'll get some links in the chat. Uh, make sure you go and check out our second channel, Airliners Lounge, for all things aviation. If you love what we're doing here on Airliners Live, you're going to love the pre-recorded stuff we're doing in the lounge as well. We've got another video on there ready to post as well. That should be up tomorrow. Yeah. Look at that. So that's Monday meeting. That can get ticked off straight away. That's yeah. on the list. <laughs> Richard's asking, is it better being the first flight of the day or taking a plane that's been used by the pilots? I, well, I like late, so I definitely like taking off other people, but there's less checks to do um, when you go to an aircraft or you're flying. When you go to a cold aircraft, there's a lot more security stuff and things you've got to check. Looks like we've got the Q8 A320 Neo lining up, heading back to Q8 City. And then uh, not long after that will be the last departure of the show. Virgin Atlantic A330. Tune in tomorrow. We'll be back live on the Simulate channel on another Airliners Live YouTube channel. Simulates by Airliners Live. We stream every Monday Not and tomorrow. Thursday. He's having a day off tomorrow. Not tomorrow, is it? Awesome. And um, the next show, in that case, on the Airlines how, Live. How does he know we don't? I know, yeah. <laughs> John, send yeah. us a message. <laughs> Is that what you know? I know, yeah. Playing out your management, though, first. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the holiday request? And uh, we'll be live on Wednesday for about 11 a.m. here at Manchester Airport. All times UK time. Pay cut for Fezzer from the, from the benevolent di dictator. I know, yeah. Captain Mark didn't even know. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll be stretching my legs too now. I'm going to walk over to the cafe in a minute and go see Tom and Anne. Hey. Have, a, have a hot dog. <laughs> Nige, thank you very much for the 29 months of membership. Really appreciate that. Long walk. Um, same well done, lads. Cracking entertainment and the planes were good too. Happy flying to Mark Cheers. as well. Thank you very much. You get some uh, scram from the uh, cafe there, Mark? Oh, I don't know, I might do. I might save myself from my crew food. You know, I look forward to it so much. There's pictures are up on the rate my scram, <laughs> scram bit on Discord, so you can have a look for yourself and see, nice. see how good it is. There's a lad I knew years ago, he went to Virgin, and he sent me mate a picture, and there's him sitting across the Atlantic with his tray table, and he's got this proper plate, proper tray. He's got a plate with a great big lump of steak on it, fresh potatoes, fresh veg, proper cutlery. You know, and there's us with our little cartons and plastic forks shoveling in this, this muck. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Fetching another Biz Jets signature tug as well on the move. Convertible. It'd be nice on a summer's, summer's day, that. That'd be nice in the rain and snow, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> that's a, uh, maybe that's why we've not seen it yeah. much. <laughs> well, they're sick of their lives. <laughs> they're going to move that plane out of the way there. Joe's is asking, reverse thrust with the engines on land. Is it automatic or controlled by the flight crew? It's controlled by us. Um, at the On the front thrust levers, at the front of them, you have these paddles or levers that once you've, when you land, you close the thrust levers, and then you reach forward and put your fingers around the paddles and you lift them up. And uh, on the Airbuses, there's, they go back into what's called idle reverse. Uh, we talked about that earlier, how it helps the braking. And then if you want full reverse, you move them all the way back. And then to stow them, you just push both thrust levers forward until the paddles click down and it closes the reverse of doors. But yeah, we do it. The aircraft uh, doesn't do it automatically. And I am flying the day bus driver. I'm off to Keflavik uh, after the show a bit later on. This aircraft touching down from Dublin. And just ahead of the Virgin Atlantic, uh, taking the intersection departure is the uh, Manchester to Grenoble uh, EasyJet A320 Neo. And the Virgin Atlantic will probably taxi round to Juliet 1 and uh, get ready for its departure. I asked for Mike um, the other day when uh, Matt was filming us because we did do all our performance from Mike. So I thought if we go, you know, there was a Virgin behind us and they were sort of a bit, you know, are you ready to go? Can you know? to us they wanted us obviously out the way because we were going the same way as a virgin and uh, you know I, I got the lad to say yeah we can we can take mike and like, oh no go down to juliet and i thought well if we go for mike we'll rotate nearer 
the RVP, so Matt will get a bit of him, you know, a bit of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what would be the reason for sending you to Julia? Is it to give you greater separation between the aircraft in front of you? Or? No, the, um, what was happening was it didn't make any difference because there was a plane coming in to land. So by the time that had landed and taken off, you know, if we went, what they wanted, they wanted to, to clear up a bit of space. Well, so so we if you, did, you'd be blocking your tail that Mike would be stopping yeah, the Virgin the, anyway. And the Virgin went off from Mike. Yeah. Um, there was, you know, they wanted, because we were both going out on the Ekglad departure. Um, they wanted us out the way as quick as possible. So um, they just sent it down to Juliet. The plane went past. We lined up afterwards. The Virgin was sitting there at Mike and uh, just uh, sped up the flow. So you're in a Canadian Air Force C-17 land at Funchal this week. It's the well, biggest well. aircraft you could land with. <laughs> I didn't think yeah. they could land there. Oh, C-17 can land anywhere. That land. You know, oh, I, I yeah. used to watch them at Farnborough. They used to land stopping next to no time with full reverse and then reverse around a corner backwards. Yeah. Wow. Slam the brakes on, the nose would come up and bang back down again, and then they'd go and take off again. Yeah, they don't need much runway. The number two team. Number two, yeah. Has this uh, dropped Liverpool off at United? <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> oh! Ooh. <laughs> 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 Easy, son. Oh, you lucky hey. playing spot. Mike's not in the chat. I'll listen, for that. Listen, <laughs> chat, before you... Oh, how dare you? <laughs> I know nothing about football. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> You've been lynch mob outside here in a minute. I'm going to jump out the window. Just lost 100 viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's asking a good question here. Um, how, how busy or competitive is the pilot market? It's like F1 and there's only a certain amount of seats and you know like drivers they need. Um, there's a big shortage at the moment. Um, the Middle Eastern airways like, uh, airlines like Emirates and Qatar are, are hoovering up a lot of pilots at the moment. And they're offering you know big money. Um, America, they're, they're desperately short. And they're paying, you know, super big money. I think one of the American airlines, I can't remember, it was United or Continental or American or whatever. Uh, they gave their pilots a 40% pay rise just to keep hold of them. Wow. Everyone, you know, everyone was moving around because the pay, pay had just gone up. There is a big shortage in the UK yet, but the UK airlines don't seem to have realised this yet. Um, I did hear at one airline, British airline, at Gatwick the other week, in, a, in the space of a week, 20% of, uh, percent of all their first officers handed their notice in Yikes. to go to the Sam Pitt and Virgin and BA. Um, Jet to are recruiting like mad because they've got a load of Airbuses coming in, and then you obviously need people to drive them. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's good at the moment. It's a good time to have Airbus on your uh, Type rating. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Virgin Atlantic lining up, talking of Airbuses, A330, our final uh, departure for today. Usually, Boeing was the 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 airlines to have on your Type ratings, wasn't it? Now it seems like Airbus is the yeah, the better option. I think if you've got a seven three rating or a, a three twenty rating, you're you're not going to starve in a hurry. <coughs> yeah. See the engine starts on that uh, Logan Air as well. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in today, and uh, really appreciate you all supporting the show as well. Over a hundred gifted memberships on today's stream. Thank you to everybody. If you have enjoyed the show today and you are new, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our future shows. We're live three times a week from Manchester Airport. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this Super Sunday show uh, with Matt Camp bringing you all the apron cams. Obviously, our two cameras here and our uh, flight radar integration as well. So thank you very much all for tuning in today. And this will be our last departure out, the Virgin Atlantic A330. There's a requirement uh, to becoming a captain to have a smooth, velvety voice. <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> As you can tell by... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly not, as you can tell by my cockney twangs. <laughs> Here we go, 330 on the roll, final departure. Uh,
And uh, we have got one more plane. Ah. We've got a Twitch viewer. I'm only joking. <laughs> he said, he went, uh, no, no, the London flight behind it. I've got a friend on that. So I wrote back on spot five gifted. <laughs> 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 He's uh, next to Depart. So, yeah, we'll, we'll grab that for you. No gifty, no entry. <laughs> Is Mark's Airbus for Minzo? I hope not. <laughs> He's still here. Yeah, Mark's got a flight later today. Was it say about four o'clock, did you say? Off to uh, Kaflovic. British Airways shuttle service, the last, last plane of the show. One more plane. <laughs> LA flight style. Except this isn't LA. <laughs> it's not quite as warm. Did that fall asleep? Yeah, sorry, folks. The wind's picked back up, so it is blowing the air. The camera around a little bit. So if I take my hand off the tripod, it does that. Here we go. One more plane. Ten fifties. It's the great thing about Switch. You can actually put a capper on the end of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to make one for Fez and YouTube. Yeah. 20 gifties are a cut it now. I'll <laughs> <laughs> do. Beautiful. Hope you have a great flight down to London Heathrow and wherever they're going as well after that. Sure Absolutely. Connecting somewhere. Matt, if you want to give us a wave as well, very well done to you, mate, up on the uh, on the old car park. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much Absolutely. for tuning in to Airliners Live on your Super Sunday show today. <coughs> We hope you've all had an absolutely awesome stream. Thanks to you all for all of your support today. Incredible show. I'll be honest, I quite like this show length as well. I feel like there's just enough going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I can see Captain Mark got a few sweeties on the go. He's getting ready. He's off to work shortly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for coming on today. Thanks, Thanks, Appreciate fellas. you, mate. Yep. See ya. See ya. And there's uh, Mr. Matt Smith up on the apron. Here he is. It'll take a second. We've got a, we've got a bit of a delay. Can you hear me now? I told him away because I... There we go. Mr. Matty Boy Smith and uh, Andy up on the roof. Bringing you all of the aviation action. But from us here at Airliners Live, hope you've all enjoyed the Super Sunday show. We'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. So, see ya. Only joking. <laughs> With a five gifted, thank you so much, mate. Appreciate you, dude. <laughs> nice one. Cheers, mate. Take it easy. Bye bye. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much, Fangirl. Appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in as well. Cheers, Twitch group. Cheers, YouTube guys. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.